Okay, folks, here we are. We might be drunk. You know what it is. You know where it is. The beer Jew's got the stomach flu. So Sam is behind the bar. We got, uh, we got the hard liquor Jew over here. Yes, oh, wow. <laughs> exactly. We've kicked it up a notch. The hard liquor Hebe. I'm making I'm making old pals today because we're all old pals. That's yes. the name of the drink? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's one Campari. part Campari. That's a parent's drink. Yeah, it's oh, good yeah. stuff. One part Campari, one part dry vermouth, and one part whiskey. This is, I don't know who sent us this, but it looks kind of funky. What Ooh. is it? Is that, is that Britney rhyme. Spears on the cover? Who is that? Zoe Kravitz? Know. Who is, Matt, do we know who this is? No idea. It's not Britney Spears, that's all we know. All right. This is perfect. I think right before I asked uh, if she would sleep with me. <laughs> that's the face. I should say Ari Shafir is our guest. Thank you. Speaking of Jews, we got the King Jew. You're an ex rabbi. You've been to Israel. You 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 killed Arafat. I don't know. I can't. I was a fan up. of this show when it was still named. Fuck, I forget Shit, the name of it. Sweet what was it called at the beginning? What was this? This called? is sweet vermouth. We already have a problem. Uh, this calls for dry vermouth. Well, you're about to make a new drink. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a new drink. This is a new pal. This is a Boulevardier now is what we're making. Ah, That's fine. Both great drinks. Both yeah, underrated. How do you know all these? We're run a beer podcast. We have a drinking podcast. podcast. <laughs> uh, we're selling a liquor soon. Hopefully it's out by the time uh, this is out and you're out of the closet. But what co- I should also yeah. say, I'll well, it at all my underground clubs. Yes, and welcome to the flannel panel, by the way. We look like a couple of lesbians in here, really doing it up. The real boys. Portland crowd. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, Sam's uh, hitting the ones and twos. He's going to make a couple of libations, and then we'll all uh, have what, a cocktail. What was that, a first name of the podcast? I remember oh, yeah. I remember promoting it from a waterfall in Ecuador. One more oh, drink. One more drink. One more but there was drink. a podcast that had like six episodes of One More Drink, so we're like, eh, I guess we shouldn't do it. Yeah. Oh, but I don't nice. even think they were on anymore. You no. Should, you should have them on. One more drink was the spirit of the show. It was like the end of the night when your friend is like, I got to go. And you're like, one more. Exactly. That's the last time I was at the, at the cellar with, I hadn't seen Sam in forever. And I was at the Village Underground with him and Shane. We're all like, oh, uh, yeah. just busting balls. And you were like, you're drinking? Like, no, I got to go. And it really was that. Like, all right, one more drink. One more. We had an epic one, me, you, you, us three, at the Village Underground bar upstairs, Casamigos night. And I remember we opened the door and it was... Sun. Sunny. Yeah. It's at, it's at one more. Like, I'll get this round. Uh, oh, well, you got the last one. I'll yeah. get this one. And then, damn. And then you see the cracks of light coming in. I know. And you know you've done something. Yes. You know you've done New York right. And then you have to readjust your schedule. Like, okay, I was supposed to do this at one. <laughs> I'll sleep through that. I'll move that at eight to eight, you know. It's crazy, though, because when you stay up all night drinking and you see that morning that you never see, that brisk morning, mm-hmm. it's like warmer than it is. Yeah. And, and you feel like you've accomplished something and you're a winner. Instead of the actuality, which you're a huge loser for drinking huge. all night. There's a guy sweeping. Well, it's because of the Rat Pack f- picture. Well, yeah. We all are like, it's the Rat Pack picture. It's like, no, we're at the fucking cellar. <laughs> hey. Yeah. It's not the Rat We're not in Vegas with Sinatra. The right. Rat Pack doesn't have to be on for a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. But yeah, you see the garbage men show up. You see the guys unlocking the businesses and putting the metal gate up. And you're like... If it was all, if the society was just us, it would crumble. Yeah. Thank oh, God yeah. you guys exist. And Dude, by that, I mean immigrants. I was I was walking around Edinburgh uh, and I early in the morning and I saw some random guy who was uh, like stocking a Sainsbury's, like a grocery store. Yeah. And uh, he was like, oh, he recognized me. He's like, what wow. are you doing? And I'm like, just walking around like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm delivering, you know, groceries to the stores. What are you doing up so early? I'm like, up so late, bro. Acid <laughs> will take you. <laughs> oh, hey, they're coming in hot. Nice. Here. I hope these are good. Thank you. It Guys, you can get your uh, We Might Be Drunk uh, bottle of drinks glasses at home uh, right now. They're pretty cool. Look at Ooh. these. Yeah, they are. At it's We Might Be Drunk Pod.com. You got that right. We sold out. <laughs> Let's give it a shot here. That's pretty good. Woo! That's, that's not nice. bad. That's nice. It's that Campari. It really yeah. does remind me of my of brunches at my parents' house. Really? Campari and orange. Oh, yes. Campari Shafir. I like it. All right. All right. <laughs> Mark is like a, it's like a video it. game where it just like aligns the pun. <laughs> it's yes, like Plinko yes. through the through the uh, pegs of autism. Uh, <laughs> Plinko. I can't do anything with numbers, and I think it all went to letters and, and words mm. with me. I'm, I have dyscalculia. Wow. Fun is that the fact. name of it? Yeah. That's what they call it. It sounds made up. He's the kind that cannot count jelly beans. Ooh. That's exactly right. <laughs> we can that, tell you what flavors there are. Yeah. Damn, this is fucking good. This is good, dude. Boulevardier. We were going to do Old Pals. I'm glad. That's the great thing about alcohol. You don't have one ingredient. You throw it in. That's Good basically point. how every drink was created. I, I bet. think you're right. We the don't only, have this. Yeah. We'll just have this. The only exactly. difference is sweet vermouth to, to bitter vermouth. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Some guy was making a gin martini. He didn't have gin. He said, fuck it. We'll do vodka. 
There wow. you go. There's a drink. Interesting. That's the history of most drinks. Oh, yeah. You know how French fries were invented? How? Fun fact. It's here. I love these little douchey, queefy stories, but some French millionaire was eating in a restaurant in France, in Paris, and he was like, I want my potatoes uh, like uh, fried more. And they're like, all right. So they fried them up, and he was like, I want more. I want them crispy. And Oh, it's how they made potato chips. And he's like, I want him flatter. And he was just being a dick. And the guy just kept, he was like, all right, fuck this guy. We're making these flat as shit and hard as shit. He's going to hate them. And he loved them. And they started selling out. Damn. And then he tried the same thing with Oreos. And they were like, you're trash. (laughs) You're garbage. (laughs) Oreo. Get out. Get to a fair. Have you had those? Yeah. It's too much. At carnivals and shit. Yeah. It is too much. It really is split it with somebody. Unless you want to end up in a scooter. Dude, I get pissed. (laughs) I get really pissed a lot on my For You page on Instagram or TikTok. That's what always comes up is the... uh, it's like you're taking good food and making it shittier. I get the idea, but like I saw one the other day. A guy has a steak. You maybe you could find this, and it's like baby bell cheese. Oh he yeah, puts it in the middle, folds it, dips it in flour, Ooh. deep fries it, and I'm like, you just ruined a steak. Yes, <laughs> that's all yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, I know. It never ends with these people. You know, it's like the double down or whatever the hell at uh, KFC. Uh-huh. The 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 bowl, the the sadness bowl that Pat Oswalt fit. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's true. We just have to keep going. You know, we have to fry a Twinkie. It's like, yeah. when does it end? It's like, it's already pretty fucking good. I know. It's yes. made for, like, to be ready. Oreos mm-hmm. are good. Oreos they're, are good. They're classic. I like the vanillas. Oh, yeah. yeah, I love the The, the chocolate blondes? gets too much after a while. I know. One or two is okay, but I'd rather over... Do you ever get the double or triple stuffs? You got it. Oh, yeah. Do you know they make all stuffs? No. What? Just the fillings. Jesus. How does it hold? It's in a tube. Shut fuck, up! Are you making this up? I might be. Okay. As I said it, it doesn't sound real. I, dude. I can see. All ice. right. What? what? <laughs> a tube of just the middle? Is that just a box? Yeah, oh, a tube. Oh, that's like heroin. Oreo you want to cut it with a knife and go? It's pure. Wow. <laughs> a cop puts a knife. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you pieces of shit! <laughs> You're going down hard. <laughs> Wow. That looks amazing. I mean, ISIS sees that and they go, "We got to go back and bomb them again." <laughs> Maybe we should change our name to Icing. Oh, but then everyone would like ISIS. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's the problem. I just did a rebrand. That's These the guys aren't bad. Uh, <laughs> guys, you had us miss. I had that rapper Rodney. I think oh, Liz yeah. gave it to me. Yeah. I think he so had like good. seven copies. It's a classic. <laughs> One of the best. Just the idea that he tied a handkerchief around his neck is hilarious. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'll it, tell you, it looks all right. You're all right. Yeah. He just went to a thrift store for that for the cover oh, of that. Oh, yeah. It's weird that his shirt is torn and dirty. I don't know what has, that has to do with rapping. <laughs> we got to make you look gross and he, filthy. He knew so little about yeah. the rap world that he's like, it's this, right? It's just gross people? Right. He looks like a coal miner for some reason. He looks like he's just like the gay guy in the YMCA song. Uh-huh. The village people. That too, yeah. Super yeah. gay. Yeah. They won't show the ends of the boombox too because they're holding it up with strings. Because he yeah. <laughs> doesn't want to like. that old. Wait a, yeah. Oh, I got dude. one triple indie left in me and that's it. Also weird to put the boom. I mean, you would blow your ear out, wouldn't you? I would go the other way with the speaker. A lot of those early rappers mm. are having serious hearing problems. Are they? <laughs> the hearing aid. Yeah, that's a, that would be a bummer to see a rapper with a hearing aid. I know. It really would be. You don't want to. You don't want to live that long. Yeah, old rat like Snoop Dogg is hanging out with Martha Stewart. He's got a cookbook. It's weird to watch the. You know, he used to be like a badass murderer. Pimp he stayed. Slap. He stayed badass. Did you see that Kirby Enthusiasm video with him? No. Oh. He makes a rap to the Curb song. What? What? So, and Can we get it? so cool. Bum, it's bum, just him bum, smoking bum, weed and bum. driving. What? Yeah, driving uh, around. Con- it's so cool. I mean, almost like Paul so can fucking play it. So he wrote lyrics. Yeah, yeah. He raps in the song. He raps along with it to the... It's so cool. You got to play the music. Wait a minute. Another episode of a doggy dog. <laughs> Is this it? Yeah. Oh, you know boy. You know me well. You know I'm coming by the smell. I'm here when you see the weed smoke in the air. Party people wave your hands so like cool. it's your... What, what, are you, what are you doing? Who, who bought the internet? What well, in Wi-Fi? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Let a this... Oh, shit. How cool is he? Oh, he scratched it a little. Whoa! Wow! It's so fucking rad. 
this nigga born ready. Serve a nigga either with the pin or off the head. This nigga flow is dead. This is like when you bump right into in a retirement home with the old shoes. Let me fuck you up just with this. He pulls out a double stuff. I'm gonna shit. Bring it all around. Cause my pin game is late. He's just driving around Compton. This is amazing. Smoking blood. Jeez. This is the equivalent of like making anything funny. Like we see some news story and we make a joke out of it. He hears a a fucking song in the intro of a show. Of an uncomfortable show. And yes. he's like, that's got something there. Dude, he should do it to every he should we should get the cheers intro. Snoop oh, just raps over. Oh, that's chicken, chicken, cheers. <laughs> Where everybody you knows you. <laughs> Dude, you hear Snoop's rap on uh taxi? That was crazy. <laughs> Mary Tyler Moore. Uh, so many. Uh, yeah. Simpsons. Oh, that's a Simpsons good one. could Danny be one. Elfman. That could be a good one. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, Snoop is fucking amazing. I've he heard, never I've heard he's old. the coolest guy. Everyone says, have you met him? Um, yeah, he used to smoke at the store a lot. Oh, wow. Uh, 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 Stephen Glickman had a story where he was like, they were all like passing around joints, you know, and, and blunts or whatever. And he was like, I don't smoke anymore. It's been like years and years, but it's Snoop Dogg, so you're going to have to. Right. And then he was listening to his story and everyone talking. And then at some point, everyone's staring at him. And he goes like, what, what's everybody staring at? And he goes, you've been fucking bogarting the the thing, man. You've been keep, you're smoking the whole thing. He goes, oh, fuck, what? Yeah. And they go, sorry, I haven't smoked in, in a few years or whatever. And then Snoop goes, oh, what? Oh, you're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. That's amazing. That is like smoking with Snoop is kind of the equivalent of drinking with Hemingway, I would say. Yes. yes. It's kind of that level of like you found the guy. You ever Good go to point. Hemingway's bar in, in Key uh, West? Barcelona. Oh, no, is no. it cool? It's so cool. And there's no mention of him at all. There's no like plaque huh. where it's like this was where he drank. You just know it's the end of the bar. Nothing's changed. It's there's so much dust on the beer bottles all over the wall. Wow. The only thing that changes is like in the mid eighties, probably they put a fan in. <laughs> and that's about it. It's so cool. You that's can get absent awesome. there. Wow. Yeah. By the way, that just shows you front and center that weed is better for you than alcohol. Oh yeah. You got Snoop still going and where the fuck's Hemingway? He, Where's Hemingway been? I'm waiting for that next he book. He shot himself. He <laughs> exactly. fucking, yeah, the alcohol it does not end well. It's funny. There was this uh there was this poem by Bukowski that it was basically like it was for his another guy it didn't end well for. Didn't end well. But he made it to his 70s, I think. Okay. He made it further than he should have. I mean, Cuz he, he had a woman like... at the end he took care like took care of him. That's how you do it. You ah. become you're degenerate the first 65 years. Yeah. Then at the end you just find a woman. She's like, "I'll clean up this mess." Right, right. But he he had a poem where it was basically like the gist of it was you it's just like your friend you drink way too much with and you see each other once a year cuz that's all both your bodies can handle. Ah. And, <laughs> and you're both kind of just showing off when you hang out together where you're both just like like yeah this is what we do but then the next day you're like fuck yeah, I really, oh my god but man. that's how you view each other as like your fuck and it's kind of there is some i don't know there's some truth to that like we all relate to that you know totally well totally. it's also like when you see a drinking friend you're like hey you want to do this i like, know no one else is around oh. i was about to go home but <laughs> Dude, and then you remember why you don't hang out with that guy more. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that's why we don't do it every night there's some good once a year friends oh dude in new orleans the day after thanksgiving or no thanksgiving night all the old high school and college friends would meet up at the bar and Best it was like night. oh my god you're back how you been yeah. i started a business i got married i i killed my wife but you go <laughs> back you go back to college where you're like we're yes. allowed to drink yes. and we can afford all the beers we want i know you have money now it's... i make over 40 grand a year and you're, staying, <laughs> and you're staying at your parents house so you're like i need a fucking drink oh yeah so it's an amalgam of all this fucking shit and you just go blackout it is it is fun, fun as hell, but then you you drink with those high school friends, oh. and you and you're like, do you still drink like this? Or are you just doing it because you think I still drink like this? Right. You Good point. Like, please each other. Dude, I saw Sagalo the night after the cellar party. Yeah. And uh, he was like, how long did you stay? I was like, real quick in and out. Um, because we're pros factor. and we've done it a million it's times. It's a slop factory. Yeah. I I you stayed too long. You did. I did. I was that guy. I stayed till four. Whoa. And Liz was behind the bar, so she was hooking it up, and I live a block away. So I was so like, how could ah. you not? What, what's the difference? I saw a waitress pass out, um, face down. They had to move the, the table away. So they, and she starts like moaning. She's like, oh. oh. <laughs> and I'm like, she's seriously hurt. And then they got to get Liz. Liz is comforting. I was like, you okay? And she's like, oh. And they put it on her on her stomach so she doesn't like fucking barf and drink it. And then as soon as she comes, she just comes out. She goes, hey, hey, hey talking about me so like, I didn't like, she oh. popped out of it and got surly good for it's, her oh it's great damn yeah. those those parties are legendary well the staff at the cellar can drink like no they're, other oh, they're yeah. just, it's crazy i mean that's why it's i think that's why they hire them <laughs> yeah it's literally like 
you know, the knife on every finger. Judge you. That's the process. <laughs> <laughs> Can you handle this? <laughs> but anyway, Sagal of this, he was like, I felt bad. He hasn't drank in about a year. And he wow. goes, I felt bad being there. I was like, eh, maybe I should. Because you know that urge. He didn't do a program or anything. Just that sure. urge like, oh, this is why I drink. It's for yes. moments like this. So the next day he was calling everybody. He's like, you want to hang out? They're like, oh, I can't. I can't. No, fuck He goes, that. everybody called out. And he was like, oh, this is why I don't drink. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No, I got out of there pretty quickly. But I do remember a few people drunkenly eating that chicken. Like, this is good chicken. I'm like, yeah, dude, it's Popeye's. Of course. <laughs> they get it catered. Liz gets it catered <laughs> with Popeye's, Popeye's chicken. Yeah. You're wow. in a basement drunk eating Popeye's. It's kind of great. It's great. But me, you me don't and, feel good the next day. Yeah, Louis Katz pulled up a chair to that table. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everyone's like, look at these Jews. <laughs> 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 All the I took a few of those home, but oh, yeah, yeah. It, there's also tattoos. First of all, the seller party was two years b behind because of COVID. Yeah. So yeah, they, maybe they, more because it's supposed to be in December, right? Right. So they just totally blew it out. They had a craps table, a roulette table, tattoo parlor. So who's getting? I a saw. Tattoo I'm when not you're gonna like, say who. So I, I saw the guy get two. Those are fake tattoos. Man. No. Oh. What? Uh -uh. Those are real. Oh my god! I almost got one. Oh. I wow. thought they were jokes. Let's see the swastika. All right. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> but also, it's like, here you have one of eight. That's your options for forever. What You can choose one of these eight. I'm like, that's your fucking, let me think about this for a while. Yeah. Trash people. But I guess you don't want to go rogue. Like, you give me something, whatever well, you think like. Think about it. It's a tattoo. Yeah. At Skankfest, it makes sense because those people have no futures. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Damn. No, it was, that was, uh, I remember t the last time we did one of those. I have pictures of... I have pictures with Ari, and you can just see this glazed over look in our eyes. I remember playing beer pong. Beer pong was so great. I was on, Michelle Wolf was my partner for beer pong, wow. and I remember we're, we're going against Mo Ammer, who's who's killing us because he's leaning over the table. Uh, he's leaning. Uh, he's encroaching on the Israeli territory. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, I remember just an image of Michelle on his face, like you piece of shit cheater, uh, and we're just wrecked. And I'm like, we're literally like, everyone's like, oh, you guys were joking around. I'm like, she's not joking. Right. Michelle's competitive. I was. I was pissed oh, too. Yeah. Michelle's competitive. I was fuming. I was like, you fucking cheater. It looked like, it just looked like the picture of why we can't come to terms. Right. right. We can't come together <laughs> in the middle. Like, Rip down the middle. <laughs> Mo's like, but I'm hitting the shots. Like, Michelle would not let it go. No, she wouldn't. She was really like, it was that drunk glaze of like, you're a piece of shit. Oh, you're yeah. Cheating a beer pong. This is sacred. <laughs> and her Pennsylvania accent comes out. She's like, no. <laughs> no. Well, I said, they'll say, well, who cares? It's just beer pong. If you're willing to cheat at this, what aren't you willing uh -huh. to cheat? There you go. There That's a go. You go. Yeah. Is there no honor in this world? Right. Oh, my God. We need Mo on here to defend himself. Yeah, we really do. Fucking infidel. <laughs> He'll drink with us. Dude, when you think He's Michelle Wolf, oh, yeah. you, you people picture her the wrong. She's trash. <laughs> She's from, like, Central, like, Hershey. When yeah. she ended yeah. her fucking special with, with, uh, with, um, What's his name? Marilyn Manson. Marilyn Manson. You're yeah. like, what? And she's oh, like, oh, yeah. yeah, I come from She trash. said she wants to come on here. We got to get her on. We got to get her oh, on. you got to be careful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll bartend for that. Really? Oh, yeah. She'll for booze. sure. I'll chime in here or there, but I'll just bartend. <laughs> wow. We I would put her love on to a be treadmill there. the whole time. Just let her run and drink. <laughs> Orthodox beer, Jim. She lost Best Newcomer <laughs> in Edinburgh to a guy who did his whole hour on a treadmill. No way. <laughs> yeah. Is that why she's a runner now? Just to beat him? <laughs> Catch it up. Damn, those got, Christmas parties were legendary. Remember the Caroline? You might not have been around for that. that remember not. Carolines? Oh, I remember Joe Liss and I got in a near fist fight one night. Do what you know, remember that? I don't remember. I, oh, my God. I don't know what happened, but we were both hammered. And I'm going to blame Liss because he had to quit drinking. Uh -huh. But we're Good like point. two inches from each other's face. And he's like, you fucking piece of shit. And I was like, this must have been 2010 or 11. Yeah. I mean, it was ugly. Wow. What What started it? I don't remember. I do remember Rich Voss spin kicking Jason Cantor and breaking his ribs. That I remember. We were just at, we were just at a party. Yeah. He just said he wanted to fuck that. his daughter. Yeah, he Something was just like Jason was just I think drinking hard and yeah. trying to egg him on. He likes to poke the bear. Uh, yeah. Also, like you got to know someone well enough to ball bust, and some people just go too fast. And that's like, true. We don't know each other. Also, like I want to fuck your daughter. Does not. It's not a good ball bust. Yeah, it's not great. <laughs> Is that your kid? I want to fuck her. <laughs> Zing. <laughs> uh, yeah. I already was like, wait, what did you say? He was yeah. hammered. Yeah. You yeah. know, Jason's a good guy. Like, if you know him, like, we know him. We know he's a good guy. But, like, yeah, yeah Voss fucking kicked him. He, like, horse kicked. Yeah. Boom. 
Yeah. And broke times. a rib. Yeah. Good that for sucks him. to get your I ribs heard, broken by a 60 year old Jew. I heard he also <laughs> tried to stay around after that. Like, oh, it's cool. We're, right, <laughs> right. I'm sore. But it's like, that's broken rib, bro. Yeah. Yeah, there's no cast for that. I think you have a size six Jordan emblem <laughs> on your uh, chest Constantly there. Constantly in there. Yeah. Like uh, Enter the Dragon with Bruce Lee. Yeah. Got, yeah. Uh, you know, the oldest Lewis man ever to wear Air Force Ones. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Dude, I missed all, not all, you guys are still going strong, but some of the best New York boozers. Yeah, cleaned up. Soder, Lisp, Bargatz. I oh. caught. I caught the end of him. Oh but yeah, like, uh, he'll be back. He'll be. Back. You think so? I think so. Yeah. Once his kids are in college, he's gonna be a mess. Yeah, I think <laughs> once he does all like the arenas, he'll be like, I did it. Yeah, I can take a day off. Exactly. He was fun. Nate was always really fun and always uh, down. And he would go hard. And a, and a, Nate's such a great guy too. I, I mean, know. It's like you know, I yeah, I miss it. I mean, Barcelona bar. Those you know, speaking of Barcelona, that was. I passed it the other day. It's still open. It's weird when you walk by bars in New York now where you're like, a lot of the ones you didn't think would make it yes. survived yeah. and vice versa where you're like, oh, thank God. That's still just because it's a New York staple. There was a bar on second half. Maybe you can give this a goog there, Peters. It was called Cheap Shots. Ooh. Oh, it's great. Did you guys ever go um, there? Of course. Mm -hmm. that was like, it was Cheap Shots. Is it open? Or I, mean, I think it must be gone. Those I think ten, be gone. 10 shots, 20 bucks things. Yeah. It's like I, I've, I was already too making enough money yeah. like i say making 40 grand a year or more where i'm like i don't have to do that I yeah can afford i went there a lot I, I, do you remember the continental was a big the one continental. Oh, still there. the guy well the continental look it up i don't know if you get a picture of this guy but Third he's Ave. got the raiden hat on from mortal kombat uh, he wait, looks like the dude from it? mortal kombat yes that's the wait, sign let me see him the continental was 10 shot do, do you get a picture that guy, of the guy walks that guy walks his dog at my dog park Shut really up. he does a guy with the raiden hat on yeah. all the time oh i can't believe he's alive <laughs> this is the, the the bar i think the mulaney joke is about nickel shot night i think we'll die if we go to nickel <laughs> shot night. i think it's about this bar well it's a continental yeah uh, that's him that's him that's wow. him that's a guy that's a guy he's got a great dog what are the odds <laughs> what are the odds you just throw a hook at him and go get over here <laughs> no he uh that dude uh yeah the raiden hat that's like a i just see that you're like that fucking that's the dude that's, that's him. him no sun poisoning damn that's wild oh ten God. ten dollars for five shots of anything oh the price yeah that's up. it ten bucks five shots there it is it, it's such that's trash. a disaster yeah do you ever yes, go to a drinking serious. night where they have like dollar whatever Bud Lights or whatever? The boot in New Orleans has. Yes. That. But do you ever picture. go in there and just go, I'll have a um, Jameson on the rocks? And they're like, but that's going to be $9. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's what I want. <laughs> yeah. Look at this high roller. <laughs> I would love to have a, what's that guy? Bar rescue guy, Tapper. John Taffer. I would love to have him go in there and be like, <laughs> This is fucked. We gotta just right. shut the whole thing down. If the lights came on in there, it would just be vomit and rats and jizz and all kinds of. Oh yeah. Placenta. And it was next to a McDonald's. It, it's almost yes. mandatory that a bar like that is next to a McDonald's. Yeah, there, there we go. It is. Yeah, no, that was a classic. That's uh, off St. Mark's, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right yeah. It's right on St. Mark's. It's uh in Third, I believe. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. It's right by NYU. The NYU trashy area. Oh yeah. yeah. You can get some nice sunglasses right out there too, and a, and a pipe. It's amazing a woman would ever walk in there. Go to Cheap Shots, Matt. Look up Cheap Shots NYC. That was like the alternative to Holiday Cocktail Lounge. Ooh, well, we used to do comedy. The Great Bar. That's Holiday closed. Cocktail Lounge was, oh my God. We, Mark and I, so Ari, Mark and I used to do this show at Holiday Cocktail Lounge. Our friend Eric I ran a show there. And he would book, there would be more comics booked than audience members oh, yeah. every week. Every he, he would run like 12 bad shows and we're like, Eric, book one good show. Yeah. <laughs> Don't make yeah. us keep showing up for four drunk audience members. It would be me, Norman, Mackie, List, Phil, Adrian. Yes. <laughs> more yeah. comics on the show. Oh, than audience oh, members. Oh, every time. Wow. Yeah. Every time. And the, the, the bartender only loved Mackie. So <laughs> literally he'd have the game on full volume and then Mackie would come on. He'd mute it and be like, guys, watch this. <laughs> oh my god oh yeah that was a hell gig those were rough days but you got that drink ticket and it was like ah. <laughs> there's so much to be able to get that free drink ah. when you really cannot afford drinks i the loved best. it the it, best just an ice cold beer when you're broke you're like this yeah. beer is six dollars yeah and i got it for free, free. For me. well well liquor was still great you're like what well, is evan williams well you're yeah. like that's the highest well <laughs> yeah i'll take it can I have one? Summer of LOL was great like that. Oh, like, yeah. It was like free. God bless Lewis for those gigs. I mean, I, I remember I remember they tried to ban me from LOL, which like, ouch. But uh, <laughs> I remember because I, I if remember, you don't know, it's a Times Square, just tourist only. Promise them Chappelle. 
Right. I just put a, a, everybody else. It was it, when people, and first off, you have to get in an elevator to go to this yeah. gig. So people were going in there, they're like, this looks like a college like classroom. Like, yeah. What the hell are we do? So we go in there. They were basically like Acting college studios. Class. Yeah. They, they were like a little right. stage for like the scene. Oh man, did we bomb in there, all of us. Mm. But yep. I mean, I remember Lewis had my back. There it because was. No, that's too nice. That wasn't it. No, oh, is that not it? it? That's redone now. Similar. That's uh, the new one. That's where I oh. used to run a show when I was like that. That was formerly the Sage Theater. But, oh wow! But they moved it. I was already banned from them by then. But Lewis had my back to his credit. Lewis I mean, always has everybody's back. Lewis, yeah, he does. Lewis get your back. So what happened was, and I'll put you in a chokehold. <laughs> I think I <laughs> every time he takes your back. Yeah, <laughs> I think I was like, guys, I need money, and they're like, we'll pay you when we feel like when we get to it. And I was like, I have another set. I got to get paid. And they yeah. were, they made a whole thing about it. And they and then I said like, all right, fuck it, I'm I'm leaving. And and. uh Lewis was like, that's what real comics do. They need to get paid on time. And I was like, oh, that's a good guy. Yeah. yeah. That's, the, I mean, I told it before, but this is the famous spot where Bill Burr was doing the garden. And he was like, I need to get up. I want to just run my set a little bit. And they were like, who are you? And he's like, I'm doing another show. I just would love to get a guest set. And you don't have to pay me. And they were like, no, we're not going to give you a spot. Who the fuck are we'll you? We'll be behind. Yeah. yeah. And he's that's like, how much right, they love left. comedy. They yeah. didn't give a shit. And that's why they drove Lewis out of there. Because they were like, we can do it even cheaper. Yeah. From see people who broke. You, they had right before they broke, right before they became anything. Me, you, you, List, uh, Veter. Who else was coming there? Lewis, Dave Smith. Oh, yeah. They had good good guys over good, there. Good hangs oh, there, my, too. Good hangs. Yeah, it's a no, shame. No, that, that room was, was rough. I mean, Dangerfields did the same thing to Chris Rock. Apparently, when another club, RIP Dangerfields, but when Rock walked in there, he was like, oh, can I uh, can I come in? The guy goes, mm. <laughs> like stopping Whoa, him to get a cover charge. Oh, man. And then he goes, well, he goes, I, I'm Chris Rock. And, and the guy looks at the bartender like to be like, should I let him in? And the right. bartender doesn't even turn around. He goes, uh <laughs> let him in or that's all yeah like yeah you can come in but like not sorry not like right. oh my god oh my god damn oh it's still around apparently mad dog's still doing it mad dog old hair oh, i like a lingon he's underrated yeah it's a good it's a good crew of people good god crew. damn oh yeah I hooked up with the there's jason oh, canner yeah there you go what all right was talking about good times no there was a, we had some good times i had some great i did new year's there one night what? Really? Yeah, it was Danger awful. Fields? Wow. It was, no, LOL. Oh, wow. Damn, that sounds I like wasn't a on the road. It was service. like probably. You need to yeah. get a spot. Yeah. Damn. It was, it was uh, not a good place. Tough spot. Tough spot. LOL San Antonio, much better. Yeah. It's so funny, those guys who don't know anything. I would try to get uh, uh, Big J, try to get me into um, Eastville. Oh, back wow. then. And the owner, I don't want to say his name. But this the happened to me too. The yeah. owner, he was like, hey, man, my buddy already moved here. I had a TV show at the time. Yeah. A stand up TV show. Send the tape. Yeah. He goes, uh, he goes, I want to try to get in this guy Dove Davidoff and Ari Shafir. They're both new here. And he goes, All right, I like this Dove guy, but who's who's this Ari? He goes, He's just a good friend of mine. He's a good comic. I don't know. He goes, and he goes, Does he think he's better than me? Ah. And Jay was like, What? I mean, yeah, he is better than you, but like what the fuck are you talking? What, kind what does of, that mean? What kind of answer is that? To, I, I, <laughs> this guy lives a block from here. And yes. he'll come to your club for free. Yes, same thing. I lived on Fifth Street. The club is on Fourth Street. Yeah. I showed up with Che, Ted Alexandro, and Soder, and they were like, "You got to book this guy." And he was like, "I don't like him." I, wow. yeah, I tried to wreck people there too. I I worked there. I ran a show there when it first started, but then he was trying to underpay me on weekends. So I was like, "Hey, you know, respectfully, I don't. I'll, I'll work here when you pay me the normal rate." Ooh. And he nice, and he actually yeah. did. So I was like, oh, it, it took like a month, and he'll be like, "All right, you can get the normal rate." And it's like, God, it's like Why? that's the bare minimum you of can putting. Get the normal. But he rate. underpaid Michael Che on New Year's, so Ooh. good guy to burn a bridge with the, uh, <laughs> the future head of Weekend Update. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Or, or head writer of SNL. I know, crazy. Is it worth? Is it worth sixty bucks? <laughs> is it worth that to be like, oh, I'll never? You could have been the next comedy seller because all these young guys. Perfect part of town. I mean, it's now New York Comedy Club, and Gaffigan, it's a good club. Judah would show up. Janine was always there. It yeah. was. It was. It was solid. right there. It's a neighborhood place. Yeah. Yeah, man. No, I had a lot of a lot of fun nights there. Uh, the room itself is is electric on weekends. Oh yeah, holy shit. Mm -hmm. I'm there every Wednesday at eight. New York Comedy Club. I just did your show right. last week. It's amazing. There you go. What we, the Fourth Street one? Out. Yeah, we've been selling it out. It's what hot. What are you doing? Hot soup? No. No, that's at the Fat Black. This is on Wednesdays at New York. Just a show. Just a show. Showcase. Great. Eight o'clock. 
man those those old rooms like uh, lol it really is hilarious like man it's so easy to care why so do you easy. not care it was never their business model to care no. it was like this is not all the people who drove out like the canadian clubs who like never gave like russell peters just a right. fair way you got into this for for money i know do finance why, why are you doing you're trying to do bad comedy to get rich that's but that's what thing? it is it's like you ever pass by on the freeway like uh, a, 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 a building supply company like that's not anybody's dream no yeah, they're just point. like good in point. this and so it's the same shit. But they must go to dinner parties or whatever and be like, what do you do? Oh, I run a comedy club. What? I love Sebastian Maniscalco. I love uh, Bill Burr. I don't know. No, we get the <laughs> lowest that. level people. We milk them for all they're worth. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> we got people who are probably never going to make it. If they do make it, we will drive them away. That's <laughs> our model. I feel the same way with the industry. Like, you ever meet people on a meeting in a, in a CAA or whatever the fuck general meeting and they're like, oh, I love uh, Pryor. And you're like, no, you don't. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, you don't know anything. Yeah. Dude, I went to the Wild West uh, Comedy Festival, the Nashville one. Yeah. And um, That's Vince Vaughn does that, right? No. But he started, started it. it. He I think he started, started it. Yeah. But anyway, I ran it. It's been two years of COVID, not talking to any industry or whatever. And you see these suits at the hotel. And you see them and you're like, I recognize your face. I don't know who you are. I don't know if I'm supposed to hate you <laughs> or if we had if we had a fake relationship yes, or actually yes. you were pleasant i don't remember anymore do we have a bitter feud right you trying to cut my legs out from under me at the san antonio improv because i fucking told I your client that he exactly. could do better like i, I don't know i we don't need, know what shazam but for the industry <laughs> yeah, just like really. you you run peacock yeah right, <laughs> right. that's great that's great we should, they should have name tags or something at least like i'm important i'm worth talking to yeah. i actually Let's like suck to get that name tag unimportant yeah God, damn it. <laughs> yeah i just do the the books you know because yeah. the they accounting. all come at you the same way hey buddy how you doing right, right. hey buddy it's it's makes be either me way fucking score me and Vito do that that's all we do on the way we go hey yeah buddy <laughs> <laughs> there's something that just makes me like oh i just shrink I when i hear it it's like a pocketbook full of them it's like hey buddy hey champ yeah, pay sport. Hey, big dog. There he is. That's yeah. another one. There he is. <laughs> Do you know how fake you're being, or you just fake around other fakes that you're like. Mm -hmm. Alcohol friend... doesn't help either because they're, they're even looser. Oh, yeah. I know. Like, they'll go up to Shane Gillis, like, I thought the Asian joke was funny. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, Get out of here. Get away from me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they are. Uh, they Those things are always. You're like, how drunk am I going to get with these people? I know. I'm They're starting to really at every festival, like, let's go out. Let's go to another bar. Yeah, let's get yeah. a crew and get the fuck out of here. Wait totally. for these fucking idiots. Yeah. They suck. I Your own guy's good, forever. and then every other guy fucking sucks. No, there's cool people there for sure. I mean, but that, but you have to kind of weed through. Cool enough. Yeah, yeah. Not actually cool. Yeah. I know. I just haven't, I haven't done the hang for i mean the only festival i've done in forever was moon tower and i think i just kind of did my own thing i don't think i really hung yeah we I all was went there we all went for a walk a few moon towers ago we're like let's not go to the after party let's just go we'll smoke some weed we'll go walk in the river and norman was like uh it was like me list but big j i forget who else a bunch of people there we had a great time norman's like let me go do one loop around yeah at the place and the next day goes oh it was two hours and what a mistake i, know, <laughs> I didn't get any of conversation. you're waiting for something that never comes no you're right you're chasing that dragon and then you guys had great conversation yeah. you had cigars you had a weed you had a joint a drink yeah. it was it's i should have just done that it's just like we keep thinking of chasing the dragon is a good term we keep thinking it might be this great valuable thing it's not oh and the no. music is at 15 yes! and you're like i we have to speak for this festival i know we need our voice i'm putting my foot down on loud music i hate it everywhere yeah i mean unless i'm at a concert where i'm ready for it i just hate it i want to talk there should be a separate room to go dance yes brutal separate room with light jazz oh but so, well, we can talk talking. we want to talk i love a party with like four rooms with four different vibes Oh, real dance that's floor. Good. That's good. The gays and blacks, real fucking talking <laughs> for the old whites. You yeah. know, like oh, he's just he's just reinventing segregation. <laughs> <laughs> it's every, every pool hall is like only classic rock. Keep the blacks out. <laughs> no, we uh, we no, we. Uh, it sucks for this people who you like and haven't seen in years. I'm like, oh shit, Matt Bronger. I'd love to talk to Matt Bronger, sure. and then you're just like, I can't because the music's up it's, here. You can't How connect. are you? It's a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, you got to get through that time. Matt Brogger's the best. I saw him in the Montreal uh, whatever room, and I was like, I had a beer, couldn't open it. And then I saw Matt, 
And he's like an alt comic, so you expect him to be a queef, but then you're like, oh, but you're from Portland. I'm like, Matt, can you pop this for me? And he goes, uh-huh. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah. like old Portland. Yeah, yeah he's, just like, he's just like a, a like a hillbilly at heart. He's like <laughs> the nicest dude. And, yeah. And super, Sweetest yeah, guy. Yeah, he's just so cool. Funny yeah. guy. Um, yeah, man. Those fests take it out of you. I, I much, I'm much. i sorry, what were we going to say? No, no, no. You go. You go. No, no, you I go. was just going to say, if there were those four rooms, I guarantee that loud one would be empty. Or there's be yeah. psychos or be in there. dancing. Yeah. Okay. Maybe if that's Dance your vibe. It, up. it is some people's vibe. Dancing is fun if you're a good dancer. I'm a terrible. We're all bad dancers, right? Terrible. I mean, I'll I'll do it, but I'm horrible. Only Molly. It's really? my only chance. Heavy Molly. <laughs> I, went to a night, I went to a nightclub in in Berlin, and it was just like fine drugs in the bathroom. And I was like, okay, Whoa. I guess. And this place was just. I mean, it was like I said. The only way you could get. I got turned away once already. Then I came back the next day. It's Friday. <laughs> Midnight to Monday at noon. Mm. And you can stay in as long as you want. First thing I saw was a dude getting fisted. Oh. Full fisted at the bar, ordering two drinks, hopefully one for the fucking puppet master. Yeah. And just fucking <laughs> I mean, that's double fisting. Yeah. <laughs> what? Do you do I'll you stay out of that room? <laughs> Is that one of the four rooms? Uh, yeah. Do I'll you take a uh, lot of music? Do you I mean, do you, there could be a video game of Ari's life, I feel like, and it would be fun. <laughs> Sometimes you know I, I got to get through the China episode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the South, Af- the South American episode. I'm stuck in Thailand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm at the Kobe boss. <laughs> ah, I can't beat him. <laughs> um, yeah, but it was just wild. And you, you get like I can't dance, but it's all house and techno, depending on which floor you're going to. And then right. when you get drugs, you're like, I can dance now. Yeah. Oh. This, is, this is happening. Interesting. Oh. It's really just about letting go. That's it's really go. all it is, and I can't let go. You'll, yeah. you'll look like you're foolish, but then you see a guy with with socks and shoes on, sneakers and, and socks, and then that's it, and just dancing what? with his fucking dick out, having a good time, fat dude, and you're like, what am I worried about? I know. What am I gonna look like? That guy's happier than us. He's I know, happier. and he'll probably get laid because girls are like, hey, look, he's free, he's confident, and I'm there like, what do I do with my honor? <laughs> yeah. What <laughs> yeah. So good for him. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's happy. He's probably happier. He's happy that night. Oh, I was yeah. dancing nonstop, and this dude he gave me like a bunch. Of, he gave me some Molly. He gave me some ketamine, and it was just like, "You want to do ketamine, William?" Really? Like, well, I mean, I'm here. Of course I would. <laughs> Why wouldn't I? What are you talking about? What is? I don't know anything about ketamine. What does that do? Ketamine's like coke, but like is chiller. It, it's horse drink. Yeah, it's just chiller. It gives you this warm, warm, warm when you get enough. It's 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 a better coke to me. Really? Yeah. I don't. You don't strike me as a coke guy. No. Nah. With that honker? Come on, you can suck <laughs> no, up give a it to me. city. Uh, we got to portion it out before you get here. <laughs> Damn. Cartoon Ari just snorting it all. <laughs> yeah. Like, Jesus. It's like a game of snake. Right? <laughs> like, the the honker is the best word for uh, nose. Honker yeah, ever. Right. <laughs> it's derogatory, but in a way you can't complain. I heard a guy, great just, joke. Oh, sorry, the other day some guy said uh, something about Israel. Uh, the best band for Israel be called Guns and Noses because it's, it's <laughs> Not juice with gun. I, I can't. The, the setup would help it, but it was a great punchline. What? I mean, yeah. So you snort ketamine? Um, I think then we were. Yes, we were. But I'm dancing. I just can't stop dancing. The guy who was like hooking me up here or there, he was like, uh, he was like, you're not tired. I'm like, no, I'm having the time. I mean, it was twelve, thirteen hours. We left Monday at noon. We got out of there, and like thirteen hours, I was fine. But then, like the next day, I had to go to the hospital because oh, my back was just really. We're done. Yeah, I we flew to Norway the next day, and I did my show, and then like had to like stay an extra day in Norway. Whoa! Yeah, to from a horse head. trank. No, from dancing nonstop. Oh, oh. horse dancing. trank had no issue. Damn. Yeah, I think the horse trank would help that though. You would think it would because if you're a horse, night. you can handle some a lot on your back. The jockey, right? Good point. Mm-hmm. That's my thinking. But you, you. uh you dance so hard, you fucking hosp- you hospitalize yeah, yourself. Yeah, man, that is the old guy uh, <laughs> the hospital like, visit. Pace uh, the, yourself. The, the, the the Charleston got me. <laughs> <laughs> jazz, my jazz hands. Yeah. <laughs> Send him to the Roomba unit. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Wow, man, Norway. They fly. Who are you? You're like Bond. You're flying all it over. It was a tour. It was a European tour. But I was having. I took like three days off in between gigs to really try to have some fun. Damn. Good for you, man. You yeah. live. I try. See, that's I did the Bert thing two weeks in Europe with Bert. It was Copenhagen. It was Belgium. It was Russia. It was wow. uh, Amsterdam. You you name it. But he we never took a break. Uh, it gotta. was a different city every night. So I never saw a city. Oh, that's I tough. never saw Dublin. I never saw. Uh, you went to Dublin. We we did. Well, it we did Dublin. Yeah. yeah. 
But uh, all these, you know, we went to Manchester. I was in, I was out, you know. And the yeah. secret is, your Jews will tell you to do it differently. Your agents, I mean, but like, uh, <laughs> but like, you do Thursday, Friday, Saturday, maybe Sunday, whatever, and yeah. then you have just the rest off until the next Thursday. So you can either stay in the city you're already in, or go early to the next city. Mm. So like, there's no reason to stay in like um, Brussels. It's just boring and sucks. So go to Berlin early. Yeah, you know? whatever you do, take the train and just like hang out in one city. Copenhagen is great. Great. What a fucking fun Is that your drinking. favorite city? It's up there. It's the best weed in Europe, maybe the world. Really? Really? Yeah, better than Amsterdam. See, we got a, we got like a Bourdain here. Yeah. You're like <laughs> a, a, a Bourdain with a no Bourdain. kids. That's right. <laughs> yeah. With Damn. no suicidal inducing girlfriend. <laughs> man, yeah. she seemed like she something seemed was like off. Oh, yeah. Fuck, he was the man, dude. The man. He was like, who's cooler than Bourdain? I saw a thing about Bourdain where... Some guy was just like breaking down his greatness on TikTok and it was like so well put where it was like he just seemed to have he was interested in everything. He treated a Waffle House with the same respect as like a five star wow. Michelin yeah. restaurant. He was into so like he he was never bored like that. Is, right. That is being connected to the world. And he was undefinable. So like he started as I just saw that I wasn't that into him. You know, until he committed oh, you suicide, and I was like, he's got courage. But like, uh, <laughs> but like afterwards, I saw the documentary, and he goes from this chef who writes chef books. You know, or the books or, are great cook, too. Cook, being really a good. cookbook, yeah, and a really interesting way of writing, flowery way of writing. And then they were like, "Why don't we have some do some food all over the country, all over the world?" And he was like, "Hey, as soon as he took that first trip, he's like, I'm done with that life. I just want to travel and like yes. do stuff." And they're like, "Can you have something cool to eat while you're there?" And he goes, "Yeah, I can do that." But he just became this traveler. Good for him. That was almost unrelated to being a chef. He's like, "We'll meet. We'll have some nice food." But like. Yeah, it's about being in Vietnam. It's about that could have been in easy, fucking Myanmar. It's no, weird when you work no. all this time and everyone's like, "He had the dream job." I'm like, "Well, he's got a family. You know, he's got a yeah. he's got kids. He's also, I bet you, like, he was like, oh man, he's so fun. I bet you, the second the cameras were off, he was just like, oh, I'm fucking tired. Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, mm. it also is a lesson. First of all, he's sixty, that. dude. I don't believe yeah. that. I think he was like, cameras off. Like, hey, let's go across town and fucking get into. Well, some he shit. definitely had some some demons. He loved coke. He loved. Booze. Love booze. Well, it's weird when you when his whole thing was like about sobriety, and then you just see him getting shit faced on episodes. What do you mean like, his stuff was about sobriety? Well, he's a he's a recovering heroin addict. Wow. So it's but a lot of like, everything else. Yeah, but he would do he would drink on episodes. You know, I'd be like, damn, he's drinking a lot. For you just think like first off, he's drinking a lot, but for somehow somehow he was just still shredded. Yeah. I know. 60. Well, he was a jujitsu guy. Yeah, he I got jiu jitsu. He um he uh um. What was it? It's gone. Great another drink. Did you, you see guys the, want yeah, another, another drink? Did you One see the doc? Great. Roadrunner? I couldn't do it. It was I, great. I it's it, so it was good. Great. I know how wreck. it ends, so I just like I liked him you so much. I don't want to I don't want to The uh, ending. Yeah. Don't, just don't watch the end because you, you know it's gonna happen. But you the know beginning how is cool. Casino ends. But <laughs> he's still watched the whole thing. I know, but Joe Pesci deserved what he got. He hit his brother with a bat. He's still breathing. That was dark as fuck. Ooh, the little tidy whities on Pesci. Ah, oh, I don't know if much. I could watch that now. I think I'd let it in now. That's they used to a play dark on TV. Scene. That was that would come on at like noon on Sunday. Yeah, and, and they'd show that scene, but they they'd uh, edit fuck. They'd be like, forget you. So crazy. Then they show so, his limpless that's body. True. He's still breathing. That's true. Ugh. Dude, yeah. I had a guy in my in my crowd in Central Washington a long time ago, and I was talking about heroin, and this guy was like, I, was, I saw his like teeth like gone, and I was like, oh. and I was like, um. You do heroin, and he raised his glass, his Bud Light, and he goes, uh, six years sober. Ah. And I was like, and I was Whoa. like, you're drinking a Bud Light. He goes, you don't think there's a difference between heroin and a Bud Light? Wow. And I was like, yeah, you're right. I'm He's wrong. got a point. Yeah. Let me just say one fun fact about Goodfell. I mean, uh, Casino. Okay. Scorsese was getting so much shit from the crit. I mean, Mar the, uh, guys, Martin Scorsese, he's a director of thank uh, you. Goodfell Casino. He was getting so much shit from the uh, censors because he was so violent. And they go... Here's what we're going to do. We want to keep all the violence, the gunplay, the the explosions, but we want to keep all that in, so we're going to put a guy's head in a vice. And we'll just we'll just do that so they cut that out and the rest will look like, you know, nothing compared. Peaches and cream, Is that yeah. True? Yeah, so they put the head in the vice guy and they go, "That's ah, fine." Wow. And they, had, they left it in, so he got it all in. What a lesson. Push the line. Push the line. Dude, when I was doing this not happening stuff, we'd always like have that. We're like, "All right, let's try something cra one crazy thing so yes. they can put their foot down." Exactly. And then they can come back from there to where we wanted to be. Right, right. What was one that was tough to get on, Ari? Well, it was Ooh, a lot. Yeah. It was a lot of like you had to protect the people's like um, demeanor. So we had somebody who was, who was like, well, any sort of like liquor brand mm. or or um, one of my friends took mushrooms and, and left our camping thing and just was at a 
fucking McDonald's. They're like, can't say McDonald's. I'm like, but it it was McDonald's. Yeah. And so you'd like, have to say this happened at a different. Yeah, they said Del Taco. Station. I'm like, that's not going to fly. That won't be the same thing. And it's you fight for it. And then they go, okay. And then Ryan Moran's always like, let me help you fight. And then he'd get it in. Right. But then Shout out to Ryan Moran, who's a good dude. He's the only one. He good was the guy. only one left at Comedy Central. He's the only one over there wow. that you count on. Wow. Yeah. He's the only one left. He's a good person. Yeah. Man. But like, there was one where. It was, uh, I don't want to say this zeitgeist anymore, but somebody used the F word. He goes, they're going to call me. A, he was a gang member. And he's, his dad told him to turn away from a fight. And he goes, they're going to call me a, f-, you know. Yeah. And they go, you can't say that. And it's like, yeah, but he, that's the character. He's right. talking about himself at 16 years old in gang life. Yeah, that's he's referring to that time. Yes. You got to let him say it if he wants to say it. He's the comic. You can do it in movies for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> and it was this long <laughs> fight, and I think I might have lost that one. Oh. I think I might have been like, it can't happen. There you go. And then other times it was weird. It didn't matter. I had to fight for like a liquor brand, and they go, you can use Evan Williams if you want, but that's it. And I was like fighting and fighting. It might have been St. Germain. Or it might have been. Must have been St. Germain. Yeah. The whiskey or the guy? <laughs> the guy. Okay. And um and eventually I think I told him like, hey, I lost. You have to say Evan Williams. And they were like, You're like, No, it's fine. <laughs> like they didn't care at all. It goes, it didn't matter if it was whatever J Mo with that. It was that like, about. Oh. It, it's no rhyme or reason of that shit. Yeah. Let me just say this about uh uh Bourdain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going Let's back, back sorry. First of all, Eric Andre had the best bit about uh Bourdain. He's like I love the show. I love Bourdain. But let's be honest. That guy must have had the worst diarrhea on the planet. Like, <laughs> right horrible. when the cameras turn off, just like, pfft, you know, it's a great bit. And, oh you know, he, he plays it up to 10. But uh, Bourdain somehow made a beer look so good. He was so cool. He embodied cool. I found he cool did. spots because of him. Like, he really made you, like, he'd be having a great time in some weird suburb of Detroit. Yeah. you're like, if he can do it, if he then can we can find a good place. Point. And the way he said it, I already had these thoughts from some other book about travel, but, like, when he's telling it, the lady who killed him, it was like, no, don't say the name of this place. And she's like, why? Because it's going to be a line of yeah. American tourists out there. You always do that. You I always tell shit. me that. Don't I'll, say the name. Don't say it. If it's a fun place, do not say the name. Eiffel Tower, the word's out. Wait, yeah. what, what? what is it, Ari? You don't say that? We're talking, and we're talking about this cool bar yeah. uh, that does jazz on Thursdays in the West Village. It's an underground place. I will bleep the name of that on a podcast. Why? You don't want people walking in your footsteps. But don't you want to help the bar? What if they to need help? To a degree, help? you can tell your friend, oh, okay. check out this place. Word you, of mouth. You'll ruin the vibe of it. You'll ruin the vibe of it. That's true. That's if true. If it's a tourist spot. But I'll tell them about you. Joe's Pizza. You know, okay, it's already out. It's out. There's always a line. It's fine. And they right. move that line. God bless them. Yeah. Well, the line moves. Some it places does. have long lines and they take forever. Joe's Pizza, boom. Goes boom, right through. Boom. Yeah, they are yeah, good. They're good. So, yeah, you don't want to ruin a place. Yeah, you got a point. You got a good point there. And also, what do you want? A fucking bunch of fans showing up to get. But it's a good lesson, though. I mean, you'd watch that show and you go, this guy's got it made. He's in fucking. Thank you. Thank He's you. in fucking, uh, you know. Madagascar drinking a drink out of a coconut on the on a fucking cliff looking over the ocean yeah and then he kills himself so it's like hey also up? depression is not just you get to tra- no one's like you get to travel right depression right. is deeper than uh, it's in here than them booking cool flights right travel right. could like it could help it I'm telling everybody like exercise I, it, you think yeah like exercise like sun Dep- I think look at travel- him. he's traveling he's exercising these are all the things they tell you to do don't date a fucking actress <laughs> that overcomes all the depression Damn. antidotes. Maybe that's dating. why Weinstein went to prison. He got <laughs> too many actresses. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what did it. <laughs> Dude, we had a waitress at the, at the stand who's also working at Rock, Rockwood. Rockwood? Yeah. Is it called? And she goes, he came in when he was on like Weinstein? bail. Really? Yeah. And they were all like, what the fuck? And then they just had to like keep going. And they were like, hey, can we kick him out? Like the waitress, like yeah, tell the manager we want to kick wow. him out, and he's like, his his money's green just like anybody's. Wow! Like, yeah, but come on, just kick I don't know, him out. it's a little tainted. I know, yeah. just kick him out. <laughs> it's it's crazy because you look at Weinstein, he's so ugly. He's like this big, oafy, ogrey, just hideous man. Yeah, and but he's got a good personality, <laughs> I guess, and he's rich, and he did make some great movies. He did make some but great movies. But he's so he good looking. He is a great. He's like the the definition of a great producer. Like, All the Tarantino stuff. Well, knew well, knew how to cut fat too. Good apparently, Will Hunting. You oh, know, really? uh, yeah. I mean, I think he just knew be like cut this scene. This doesn't add anything. I, no, I think he was. That's why his movies. It's like Robert Evans. You just know it's going right. to be a hit. He is good. Or yeah. like that guy who does every CBS show, Laurie. 
Chuck Lorre. Chuck like, Lorre. I know how he to do this. He just knows how to make. But at the same time, you're like, yeah, it's a fucking, <laughs> obviously not a, it's good, a monster. Good yeah. person. But. He was the, he had the idea to make Kill Bill 2. Two, two parts. things. Yeah. Because he's like, like, there's too much long. good stuff. You got to double it up here. Well, also, I love Tarantino, but you're insane if you're like, yeah, one movie, six hours. Uh, I know. They'll I know. sit through it. I saw it, the, the French uh, version of it, the con fest, for festival version of it. We saw it at one of those, the Tarantino owned um, movie theaters in, on the Beverly, whatever that one is on Beverly. New oh, Beverly, yeah. the New Beverly. Yeah. He bought it eventually. Back to back with an intermission. Whoa. It was great. Well, look. Damn. If you're into it, it's fun, but I'm just saying for like a mass audience, no it's way. insane. Who I has mean, five hours? Kill no Bill way. 1 and 2 are incredible. 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 Every no. one of his movies are great. Yeah. Wow. What? Oh, he's a fucking, I mean, don't. <laughs> I mean, look, I'm a fan. I'm, yeah, I'm, but tell I'm me just which watching, one. Quentin, I'm watching Quentin, hour, Quentin uh, come on, we might be drunk. Please. 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 Love to have have you. Our Matt, are you going to are you going <laughs> to clip this up? Quentin. Quentin. You like stand-up comics. We love you. This is a match made in heaven. Yes. Quentin, come on, we might be drunk. I'm a start, fan. Start the hashtag book Quentin on. There's on only we one I in Quentin. <laughs> you, you're making two what did eyes. He say? Quentin. Oh, Quentin. Cut Quentin. That no, part. no, don't put the second E. It's the first E. Call him second Tarantino. I. That's not even his real name, by the way. I what th- is it? I think it's Ian, isn't it? Yeah, Quentin. Yeah, Quentin. So you're saying Quentin. I feel like we're splitting hairs Let's here. call him QT. You're right. <laughs> cut all that out, please. Quentin, no, keep it. <laughs> <laughs> Quincy. By the way, I mean, look, I know everything about the guy. I'm a huge fan. He uh, he worked at Video Archives, and he started mm. a, co- a little community about movie loving, and then he made uh, My Best Friend's Birthday. It was his first movie on Super 8. It's not great. I got a Tarantino story. Please. please. Very little involved with him. I'm at, uh, I'm at uh, Kimmel. Went to see um, Morgan Murphy, who's doing stand-up. Oh, I love Murphy. Tarantino was the first guest. And wow. she goes, hey, do you want to come? Tarantino's like, oh, I, I mean, I I'm love, I wrote my thesis in college on on, wow. on uh, Pulp Fiction. Really? Yeah, love Tarantino. Love what Pulp was your Fiction. thesis? How everything was, um, there was like a lot in there. You're like, I thought the gym everything. scene was a thing of beauty, and here's why. <laughs> uh, it was, it was uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Travolta's character is always played by a, a car or a race car of some kind. So he blows that guy's head off in a car. He's wearing when they have right before he calls. He's like, "We this girl overdosed." You know the dealer. Oh. He's wearing a go uh, speed racer shirt. So oh. He's telling you he's about to call. And there's a place where uh, Bruce Willis is walking uh, in the apart his own apartment. He thinks it's empty. He's like, "Nobody's here." So he starts walking. And it pans down and it shows a race car on a shelf. It only shows him from the waist down. And that's Tarantino's way of saying he's in the bathroom. He's here right now. Wow. The race car guy is here right now. I love that mm. kind of shit. Yeah. It doesn't give it away, but giving it away yes. if you're really willing His to look. attention to detail, man. Oh, God. Anyway, God I'm bless there. bless Bruce Willis. I'm going to miss him for movies, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. He was bomb, but way to get out before you get sad. Yeah. You know? In 50 years, he'll be gone regardless. And he'll still have that So legacy. many good movies, though. And, like, I, you know what's funny? I saw him in my deli once. And he what? Just, like, took pictures with, like, everybody. He was just like, oh, he's just like a nice guy. Greatest guy. So um, I think he's got a picture of Joe's Pizza. Anyway, Don Barris is, is doing the warm up there, and he's going around telling prison stories. Like, who's got a prison story? And somebody's like, I do whatever. <laughs> and then he cut, lacks eyes with me, and like from across, because we're friends. Friends, we do the like weird like Jew and A at the end of the night at the oh, comedy yeah. store. Love and he, Barris. He locks, so he comes over, and he goes, "Oh, sir," pretending not to know me. He's like, uh, "What do you got?" He goes, "No Jew stuff." And then, you know, because it's like corporate job. And, sure. I, and I just said, I just gave the, the plot of Hurricane. I was like, well, I was a I was in prison for nah. a while. I was a championship <laughs> boxer. And um, yeah, and I, I was there for a while until this young young African-American kid took up my case and he proved my innocence and <laughs> I'm out. And you could hear like murmurs like, is that what it? Right, right. Anyway, it's in between segments. But Tarantino's up there. He had done a Tarantino trivia contest with a Tarantino expert, lost to him about himself. Wow. Wow. And so then... So then Afterwards, he's uh, he's like staring into the audience, and I'm way back, and it looks like he's staring right at me. Oh boy! And I'm like turning around. I'm like, is there a monitor behind me or something? I'm like, no. And then he does another segment, and then afterwards, he's just fucking staring at me. And I mean, I'm like twenty rows up. But you sound like the guy at the strip club. Like she likes me, you know. You start thinking exactly. maybe I'm just being crazy. Exactly. No way. And so then, uh, he in between segments, he calls Barris over, and then they're looking up at me, and I'm like, "What the fuck?" Oh boy, it was weird. Oh boy. Well, and he does this go to the store a lot. Maybe he saw you there before that. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't tell what it was, and I was a door guy back then. And uh, so then, Barris comes over to me, comes up, and he goes, "I was like, what was that?" He goes, "Yeah, he was looking at you." I'm like, "What?" 
He goes, he saw me messing with you, but he wanted to know if you were the amazing racist. What? I tried to get to the green room after the show. Just like, I want to fucking deliver a pizza in a Tarantino movie or hold a fucking. Oh, shit, I that was my cue to go over <laughs> and butt fuck you. tried to give me some time. I missed my, my butt <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Sorry. Hard. And they wouldn't let me go fuck. to the green room. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> my podcast dick doesn't work, man. Uh, it happens. Um, dude, that's crazy. Wow. Tarantino. See, that's the At least he was the aware internet. of me. I was like, uh, so I was, it made my fucking year. Wow. Damn. That's amazing. <laughs> Good for you, man. That means he's aware. Of, Quentin Tarantino is aware of you. For a moment. he almost, He's casting you in the remake of Dead Blanker Storage. That's, uh, <laughs> you're like, Jesus. <laughs> Tarantino, no, uh, if you ever do a, a movie about the Orthodox Jewish community. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you, your version of A Serious Man. Did you see that movie? The no, I wanted to. The Brothers? Cone Brothers. Yeah. Do, who, who, are the, is Tarantino your favorite filmmaker of, of, of this generation? Yeah. Once I once I did because so I was good I was like hey can I do my research paper on Tarantino this film doc, Dr. Uh, Robert not Dr. Kolker and um and he goes uh, yeah but you got to watch it like fifteen times you can't just watch it once and you got to watch his other movies too and then it was weird because after like seven or eight times watching it that's when I started picking up on other stuff wow I had to go to the library to watch it. And like, wow. that's when I was like, oh, wait, 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 hold on. He said, I'm a race car ready to explode. What does that mean? Yes. And then he go back like, oh, I, I'm starting to see more. There's all kind of Apple cigarettes. There's all kinds of stuff. He set up that, a world. Yeah, it's a whole world. Not to mention tension and fucking, he just always does. He, to me, he's the embodiment of my definition of art, which is entertainment with a message. Mm. So like, you could just have a pretty painting, but what's that? Are you saying anything with it? And then also, like, if you're saying something, but it's not fun, you know, like a fucking heady movie, you know, where it's like, this is this is not entertaining, but I get your message, but it's sure. not entertaining me. It's too heavy handed. That's not my style of art. My but, style of art is you're saying something and you're entertaining me the whole way. I'm pushing back here. Yeah, let's me hear too. It. I, I, I like your movies because I don't always think there's a message. I think they're fucking awesome. Sure. Fast and Furious is great. I wouldn't call it art. But is know. there a message in Kill Bill? Is there a message in yeah, like... There's a message in what all about of David it? Tell? It's just humor entertainment funny joke 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 there's no message i think the message is like con connect with what you're good at which is joke writing him all and right Justin well Nick so the like, term message is, is, yeah, 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 yeah. loosey-goosey it, Lucy -goosey. it, it right, sounds yeah. like you're saying racism is bad or, it's just, you know. right it's my version of what's the, the best so it tells messages trim the fat yeah these are just great jokes right he leans more on the entertainment and less yeah. on the here's my best. Here's what I want you to take home and think about tomorrow. I, my favorite. I've said this before in the podcast. My good, favorite Tarantino good, good movie point. is Jackie Brown because it's just a fucking great. I love it. It's, it's his Pinkerton. Yeah. It's what? It's his Pinkerton. His wow, <laughs> wow, oh, well done. Thanks. It is his Pinkerton. Is it was not yeah. yeah, not well received commercially for some reason. But everybody yeah. later go, dude, it fucking rocked. We it's one it of my favorites. Uh, he, Tarantino never fails to deliver an awesome soundtrack as well. Yeah, Even when it's boring. The they were like, Phonics. Hateful Eight, boring. I'm like, what? I, I guess. The but you're still talking seen. about it. I, gotta I love it. Hateful you're Eight. You're still talking about it weeks later. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, and his, his not, quote unquote, like weaker films are better than pretty much anything that year. I mean, Can I give you a film recommendation? Please. I will tell you nothing about it. I, I love Louis this last night. I told Shane And the this. listeners are going to love that you are bringing a wreck here. This, is not, my, wreck. this is not my official uh, oh. WMBD uh, um, um, recommendation. Everything, everywhere, all at once. I hear it's I keep incredible. About it. Look up nothing. Okay. Just go see it. I just I'm know it's you, the, don't kid from, go, the kid it from about? Goonies and Indiana Jones too. Wait, Data? The yeah. Asian kid? Yeah. Really? He's really? 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 And Michelle Yeoh. She kills it. She kills it. Dude, I, can't wait to I keep see hearing it. about it. Up. I heard nothing about it. I just got an invitation. Like, you want to go? I'm like, sure, whatever. I'm like, it's about, my don't even tell me. We're going. I've tried it. I steal cable and I get all kinds of I get every movie like every I'm still, I'm still stealing uh, Big J's Netflix password I'm oh, really upset about go. this no stealing by the thing. way Netflix dropped apparently did you hear yeah, that yeah, but we'll, they wouldn't book you we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> but yeah uh, so I, I keep trying to watch but they don't have it yet on my uh, my cable I'll, steal. I'll go again to the theater really, really? I, mean, I would go see maybe it. we'll do a little field trip actually I'm here this weekend I'm Just not saying. I'm nah. gone not. but dude uh, it's funny I I follow Patton Oswalt on Twitter, and he's done like eight tweets about this movie. No. He's a big film nerd. He's like, it's the greatest movie. It's I incredible. told Louis last night, and he was like, he was like, uh, it's American or foreign? I was like, hey, dude, I don't want to tell you anything about it. I just want you to watch it. And he goes, I will. That's a recommendation I don't get. I've, you've never recommended a movie to me? Yeah. Okay. Louis, Louis recommended that. the movie California Split to me. So if you haven't seen that movie, that I give that a, a, a high rec, because uh, it's Elliot Gould and George Siegel as just degenerate 
degenerate gamblers. Definitely the movie Uncut Gems. Uncut Gems. Oh, Got a little yeah. inspiration from this movie. Oh, really? It's a Robert Altman movie. Robert if Altman you, underrated. Great. One of the most under. I mean, The Player Gosh. is as good a movie as Shortcuts, ever. which, which Shortcuts you read the book. Shortcuts is dark as You fuck. read the Robert Car Raymond Carver yeah, book Raymond about Carver. it, and you see that, and you're like, oh, they're wildly different. Yeah. What's Man, that scene with the waitress, it's like there's something so dark about them just like trashing your wife who's the waitress at the diner. Ooh. Played greatly by Lily Tomlin. Uh, uh, and Tom Waits is the husband. Wow. And that scene where that, that redhead head chick is naked, like yeah. from the waist down, trying so to dark. argue about how this guy never came inside her so she didn't fully cheat. Whoa. What was her name? The Rock. What movie is this? Shortcuts. I've never seen this. Oh, it's Altman. It's it's one of Schumer's favorite movies. I'll watch that this that's, weekend. That's a, Robert Chuck Altman. Schumer. Good at Chuck good Schumer. Good. <laughs> Chuck Schumer. Big movie fan. Big movie uh, no, you know, uh, yeah, Altman is one of the best ever. I read the book and studied it in college. And then had, a class, dark and had a class where we discussed Carver is very dark, where we discussed the movie. And I got an easy A because like, what? You, that's what he's saying here by this film? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, by the film. So wait, did you know, is it Errol Morris who uh, wrote Rum Punch? Uh, Elmore Leonard. Jeez. Errol Morris is the uh, true crime guy. Oh, okay. Who's sorry. amazing. Yes. Who, who did Thin Blue Line. Right, Ooh, right. Okay. Elmore, Elmore Leonard. Elmore Leonard. He wrote Rum Punch, yeah. which is based on- uh, uh, Jackie Brown. Jackie Brown is based on that. Oh, and yeah. he read the script, and Quentin Tarantino was too scared to show him, because he's like, your book is so good, I don't want to fuck with it. And he read the script, he said, it's the best screenplay I've ever written. Dude, wow. dude, I'll, I'll say this read. too about how cool Elmore Leonard apparently was. I knew one of the guys who wrote for Justify, great guy, Chris Provenzano, wrote like, I want to say like 30 episodes of that show. I literally met him as a fan. I met him because my friend knew him and I was like, can I just tell him I'm a fan? And we ended up just becoming buddies through it. But Justify is one of the best shows of all time. It's so underrated. Tarantino is right? directing. Yeah. yeah. Tarantino is going to direct a few when it's back. And uh, it's Elmore uh -huh. Leonard apparently said like, he's so humble. You know, he's, he's passed away now but he said like i never could have written a show this good like man the writers are and it's based on his shit but how yeah but how cool is that yeah it's based on fire in the hole but like it's cool when you're like you guys are doing a great job how cool is yeah. it that the writer who's this fucking icon is like you guys have done better than i ever like generally they always yes. go, you're messing it up you're ruining my vision exactly. right right yeah. but I they really that. did kill it like it's really a good fucking show you see worst woman in the world Loved it. I, I gotta Loved watch it. it. Norman, Amazing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch it. NBA playoffs is a hard time for me to it watch is. movies. I saw three movies uh, in a row. I got point. a great streak going of like, damn. I saw What's Licorice Pizza. First. You liked it? Loved it. People are shitting all over it. People, oh, oh, people are shitting on something. <laughs> I mean, honestly, well, anything like, good in the world, like, like, what is like, backlash? People I respect are shitting. Ari on Ari and I saw Once Upon a Time in uh, Hollywood together. Oh, I love yeah. that movie. That was fun as and hell. Whiplash. We had fun time. Oh, I love some Whiplash. Good we Whiplash. saw Django. We saw Django, dude. Whiplash is fucking awesome. Whiplash. I know people hate I it. Love I love Whiplash. I rewatched on a flight. I was like, I love it. I love it. It's great. It's Got over me the there. top. Got it's me silly, there. but it's great. Licorice Pizza, worst woman in the world, and then everything everywhere all the time. Worst person. Worst person in the world? I think it's person. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't see gender. I believe it. But either way, I think it's person. But which, in what order, Ari? Uh, I would go everything, everywhere, all at once, okay. first, and and I don't, I don't want to overhype it, but I want everyone to see it, so you read into that however you want. But it's sci-fi. I sci want people to see it. I hate sci-fi. No, no, no. Don't it's, write off genre. Don't, all right, don't, all don't, right. Don't, don't. It's just, just go see it. It's, okay. And then, and then worst person. person in the world, yeah. and then licorice pizza. But all just like... These are nailed movies. These are there are moments in 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 Licorice Pizza, the third best, where I'm like, it's such a true moment that it's almost I get choked up. I start like tearing. I can't help it. It's like I love that nailed reality here. Yes, we're such, we're such movie Great nerds on it. this podcast. Like it will turn into a movie. I know. I know. There's this a moment with this drink, kid. Right? Go what? This is what you do when you drink. You get oh yeah. Drunk. Let me so tell you a pet peeve. Can I do you my talk pet peeve? peeve. These fucking dorks. Who come onto a drinking podcast and don't drink? <laughs> what the fuck kind of shit is that? Uh, it's a drinking podcast. Uh, you hear that? Don't come in. Well, some Apatow. people are sober. Well, Apatow was because of us, honestly, because we we had to we had to backlog and we recorded with Birth the day before. Oh, we, did he come on before liquor was invented? <laughs> drink. <laughs> yeah, Gaffigan. I know you came on at noon. You're Irish. Drink. <laughs> No, I, I I hear you, but these people have jobs and they're busy, and, and we record children. at noon a lot. Yeah, so Mark and I will usually drink, but we can't blame you if you don't. 
Gaffigan for trying. didn't drink? That's disappointing. I don't know if he boozes. He was in the yeah, he, he boozes. Does. Oh, does he? Yeah, but he was in the middle he's of cool. a press tour. He probably had like twelve interviews that day. Yeah, that's yeah tough. well, loosen up a little. And he's got a family. What are we gonna like fucking egg him on to get shit faced? He's got five <laughs> yes, kids. He's got yes. Eight kids. He can handle it. <laughs> you guys are two of the best drunks in New York. My dad has eight kids. He, he needs a drink. What? <laughs> <laughs> Drink more, you can't get a boner, you less Whoa. kids. We Might Be Drunk is brought to you by Displate. Displate is a one-of-a-kind metal poster designed to capture your unique passions. They have millions of cool designs available featuring gaming, movies, comics, anime, with officially licensed designed designs from Bethesda, Star Wars, Netflix, and many more. It only takes 20 seconds to set up. With no power tools, no damages, no frustrations. And once you mount one, you can switch out a new one in a flash. Wow. Look at that, folks. Holy hell. Look at that metal. Is it upside down? Yeah, it's upside down. Oops, sorry, everybody. There you go. The triple Lindy. Yes. Uh, and with everyone that you buy, Displate will plant a tree. Tell them how, Samuel. Click the link in our description to see some of our favorite Displates and get our special discount 20 23% off up to two Displates or 34% off three or more Displates, which will automatically be applied to your cart when you click the link or use code DRUNK when you visit displate.com it's an amazing deal and only available for a limited time and i mean that's a classic poster classic love and it, it it's light it's fresh it feels Whoa. good look i think it comes with some minis too look at that a magnet there super cool thank you displate get on it get your own thing we might be drunk is sponsored by better help online therapy relationships take work a lot of us will drop anything to go help someone we care about. We'll go out of our way to treat other people well, but how often do we give ourselves the same treatment? For me, working out or buying some new sneakers is an investment in myself. This month, BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to take care of your most important relationship, the one you have with yourself. We're in therapy. We go to the same guy. It's necessary. Clean out the garbage. Your head has all these horrible thoughts splicing your childhood traumatic experiences you're a wreck you're a mess you need therapy get out the garbage whether it's hitting the gym making time for a haircut or even trying therapy you're your greatest asset so invest time and effort into yourself like you do for other people tell them how better help is online therapy that offers video phone and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to maybe you got a weird boil on your face or something mm. you're weird you know you don't want to see that you're all set. Yep. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp Online Therapy. We Might Be Drunk is sponsored by BetterHelp, and listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash drunk. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash drunk. You got to do this. It's, it's therapy. Very important. Take care of yourself. It's going to change your life. Here, here. <laughs> what, what were we just talking about before this? Uh, oh, true moments or whatever. Oh, movies. you had a peeve, you said. Such a great way oh, to Oh, that's play. your peeve. That's, that's my peeve. real peeve. peeve. There's a moment where this kid is like trying to flirt with his chick and just there's a moment where he just reaches over and like touches her finger. It just brought me back oh, to like ooh, high school big. and college that of like big. getting that just touch or when your knee touches another oh, knee. It's knee. electric. And who you feels it's a well known director, bit? right? Yeah. What? Paul Thomas Anderson. Paul Thomas Anderson. Yeah. He just fucking nailed that moment so hard. Are you a big like, fan of his movies? No, but I know I'm like, I know this guy. He hasn't let me down. I haven't seen all his shit. Of course I'll go. So I, I never see. saw The Master. I know that's oh, a it's big fun. That Tarantino's was... top five movie, Boogie Nights. That's yeah, it's Tarantino's in, it's incredible. top five. Ever? Ever. That's an entertaining with fucking It's a great message. movie. Yeah. They're friends the way comics are friends. Like uh, Tarantino loves Paul Thomas. No, he's amazing. He's he's Paul Thomas took a shit on Tarantino's bed. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did a broke in there. Like, what does that mean? It took me a second. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it can't was, be a complete it was, joke. It was genre shift. I know where we were. She, uh, she must have been great in bed. Must have oh, been great. Yeah. Must have been just amazing. Yeah. yeah. You know when you're getting to that good, you're like, this might ruin my life. I know. It's like edging, but for your life. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I must I love the idea of this trial. You watching the trial? I've been jerking off to Clips, it. Clips, yeah. But I like when he called her a slippery whore. He has to read the text. He said it's that? Al yeah, it's, well, it's like Lenny oh, Bruce, where, you, where you're almost just like, he's like, well, I didn't say it like that. I didn't say it like that. <laughs> exactly. I love you the get... idea that Chris Brown is watching this like, 
Why are we going to trial? I'm going <laughs> to knock this out in the, uh, the bedroom. You, you didn't know? even punch her? Yeah. Like, what do you mean? Yeah. What are you crazy? And Alec Baldwin's I, watching like, wow, I got off easy here. This is... <laughs> I, bet, I bet Amber Heard and Johnny Depp fuck again. I don't know, man. I think I think if you're a real artist like Johnny Depp is, and you want to live dangerously, you're like good point. And all his friends like, do one more for the road. What are you doing, dude? I'm like, I know, but man, she blows me like I've never been blown before. I think so. Yeah, she blows me like a low level actress trying to become mid level. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I know Aquaman was well acclaimed, but she wasn't that good. This is what I like about my lady is she'll be like Johnny Depp. You know, he seems like a nice guy. She's on his side, but she's like the accent, the outfit. You're from Kentucky. What are doing? Yeah, I like. I'm that an actor, her. and I, I uh, yes, we repeat this again. You're not Sir Ian McKellen, dude. I've no, had you're from the fucking south. I've had some exactly. Liquor on occasion. Get out! He, he looks like he owns a jewelry store or something. You know, he's got the vest on, the man bun. If he was a nobody and he showed up, somebody saying Big J was saying this. Like, what if one of those '80s comics showed up to the club now, like Emo Phillips or something like that? We're like, what are you doing, dude? Why are you talking that way? <laughs> if Johnny Some Depp, of the best jokes the of jokes all time. Are great. Oh yeah, but Emo just that Phillips vibe, rules. or like yeah. here's my thing. Where it wouldn't fly now. If Johnny Depp showed up as a young comic wearing a fucking bandana and seven scarfs, you'd yeah. be like, fucking. I mean, I can't use the f word right now, but like, that's what would happen. Well, it's like that. Uh, you ever heard that Dimitri Martin story where Mark Maron's like, he sees him with a skateboard. He's got a longboard, and Maron goes, "How old are you?" And Dimitri goes, "I'm 28." He goes. You got two more years with that thing, <laughs> <laughs> which just encapsulates the whole '90s uh, comedy vibe. That's the nicest Mark Maron ever that was. Is. To someone in the '90s, <laughs> giving him that's two as years. good as it got. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, the now Maron be like two years too late for that. <laughs> I over Dimitri once, and he said he uh, he had a book with him at Caroline's. It was like yeah. Patrice Norton, all these guys, and they're like, he's got a book. Ah! And they like went off <laughs> on him. He's like, I don't know. I love reading, reading on the subway. Dude. What? I, I want too. I want Dimitri well, on this great. podcast. He I would love great. to have Dimitri. Tree. Early Comedy Central. I remember watching that guy when I he's just amazing. started. Going, God damn, he's funny. He's underrated. He's a pure underrated. joke guy. I love him. It's just underrated. all jokes. He's got a scroll of tiny little writings. Dimitri. To Dimitri. Get the word out to Dimitri Martin. We want him on this podcast. Yes. Not We're as much fans. as Tarantino. But still, <laughs> we want you. No. no, we want Dimitri for sure. I mean, he's a He'd great a joke one. guy. He's one of us. Like, I hung out with him in the green room. He just talks like us. He's normal. I heard heard about him. They said when he had that sketch show, they were like, he was difficult. Uh, Early when I started working at Comedy Central, like, he was difficult. He always wanted things his way. And then I didn't get it till later. I'm like, oh, no, no. That means he didn't want to take dumb notes from some suit. Exactly. Because he's odd. He's different. He's unusual. So I'm sure they didn't get it. Yeah, but they were calling me difficult for the same things. So like, why are you editing this for so long? I'm like, because it's some comic story. What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> I want to make sure it's good. Exactly. Yeah, I bet they was just like, no, I don't want to take your dumb note on this. Yeah, I mean, you had a show. You sat with me and let me edit and give you notes, and then you edit it, and then you sent it to me to see if I liked it. I mean, who does that? Yeah, but you got to make it good. You got to respect the comedy. And then, and then Comedy Central, those people will be like, you're being difficult. I'm like, no, I'm just working hard to make something good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I keep watching these. I'm such a nerd. I keep what? watching these. Scorsese it was four hours. Now I'm on the Tarantino one. That one's four hours. I'm two hours. What doc? In. The docs. These YouTube docs. Some fan makes them, and they're so dense and amazing. And they all had problems. They all had struggles. Like, isn't that cool? Cut this out. Cut. They. they oh yeah. They begged him to cut the ear thing out of the uh, no pun intended dogs. reservoir, and they're no. like, "You got to get rid of that. That's going to ruin the movie. It's going to ruin box office." And he's like. I need it in. When They're are like, these people going to understand? Let the artists do what they want. That's what's going to make it good. It's not your vision. It's his. So even if your thought is better, this will make people thought. uncomfortable. That's the point. Yeah, exactly. I went into a two-year depression after Revolutionary Road. I mean, it affected me to where I was ready to Heavy. kill myself. Well, I never Heavy watched duty. it. I knew it would fuck me Don't up. Don't watch it. But I'm like, it's great because of that. Don't uh, fucking nerf it. But... It can affect ticket sales, and that's what they're saying. That's they're not what, saying, yeah. "Hey, it's it's bad art, it's bad right. whatever." You're it's right. like that's going to hurt the sales, and they might be right, but then don't get into the business. Go go do you know, you uh, know, real just, estate. You know, I just watched is uh, the girls gone wild doc. The guy Joe Francis. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. on TNT, dude. TNT. First, I, I know, wow. it, but that's I mean, great. they kept running the ads for it during the NBA playoffs, and I was like, yeah, "All right, fuck go. it, I'm going to watch it." And it's literally like the like. 
it, it, first off, it's called Girls Gone Wild Exposed, which you're like, all right, I it's get it. It's already exposed. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Pretty but exposed. then he's like, you know, he's they're like, he, turns out he was a bad person. You're like, you don't say. <laughs> <laughs> turns out the guy who tried to uh, exchange tits for a t-shirt wasn't a wonderful human being. Teenage tits. Teenage tits. Yeah, wow. they were underage. Well, there's a great, there's a sheriff in it who's like an old man and, uh, God damn, I forgot where it was, where the sheriff is. But he's like an old man. And he's like, he's like, you come into my town trying to barter titties. Ah. Oh, he's like, you ain't going to get out. <laughs> That's the best part of Docs is those side weirdo <laughs> characters. You're like, who are you? Why are you trying to steal the show? Uh, <laughs> oh, dude, he's, he's clearly like trying a little too hard, but it's pretty damn funny. He's like, you don't ever disrespect women in my town. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, That's all I do, though. It's uh, literally my job. You're pretty much telling me not to come to your town. Yeah. Oh, he's, I mean, he's been accused of rape, domestic violence. He's a terrible human being. Terrible. Really. Wow. But, but like, it's pretty fascinating. I mean, like, he's got so many celebrity friends. I looked at my life. did go wild they went wild yeah. it, it was the right point in time for something like that to perfect take moment but he was making like hundreds of millions of dollars a year and then all wow. of a sudden the internet shows up ah. and people ain't spending 29.99 on fucking dvds of tits now we're getting of double tits, fisting, exactly anal. For free. Yeah, it's, come on but i heard the lawyer she said you know this is like it's interesting in porn they call the money shot you know the ending we all know what the money shot is but she's like in this it was the loss of innocence it was like when the Ooh. woman like and you're like oh shit this is pretty dark man. Interesting. wow yeah you want to see a normal girl take her tits out you don't want to see a porn star that's you want to see someone exactly who's that's good that was I it. mean, Mardi Gras had that all the time. Where yes. girls like, take your tits. I'm like, no. And then they like, throw beads out. I'm like, oh my God, I'm yeah. 15. I may as well. It's true. I saw a lot of tits as a kid. Yeah. yeah. I saw a lot of dicks too. Yeah. There was dicks at Mardi Gras? That was just Catholic school. <laughs> but no. <laughs> the, the innocence thing is very interesting. Yeah. That's so true. Uh, the Because that's really why you bought it. Was it the realness? Jimmy Kimmel always had that funny story back before he was a TV, what do you call it, a late night guy. He said uh, the best strip club would be you go in, there's a waitress in like a hoodie and jeans, you know, doing her thing. And then you, she's got glasses on. You get to know her a little bit. And then she would go up and get naked. That would be a way better strip club oh, wow. than just like the heels and the fishnets and the, yeah. the whole thing. And she was like, I shouldn't. I yes, shouldn't. Really yes. melt it. Yeah. <laughs> I was, that always resonated. I was like, that, this guy knows. There's a casualness to the nudity of strip clubs. It's unenticing to me. Yeah, well, just it like, becomes unspecial. Yeah, unspe It's like I want to like. I don't love it. It's just too casual, and there's too many dudes around. I don't yeah. like. I'm not a strip club guy. Me I don't either. Like I'm not either. Hooker. All right, there first you of, go. for Norman's bachelor party, we're just watching movies. <laughs> hey, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> we'll watch. Uh, we'll watch. Uh, what was the about the, the the Vegas hookers? Oh, Cat uh, House. No, um, uh, um, not Bunny Call Girls, Strip Girls. What is it? The stripper one with the chick from Saved by the Bell. Oh, Showgirls. Oh, Showgirls. Showgirls. We'll just watch that on, yeah. on repeat. With Robert Loggia. That movie's pretty funny. <laughs> Dude, that, you ever see it. the Family Guy thing of Robert Loggia? <laughs> no. Dude, pull that up. It's so fucking... <laughs> it's so dumb. Family Guy covered everything. They covered yeah, really fucking did. everything. It's so... This is one of the dumbest things I've ever seen, but it's like... He fucking played along, too, which is like why you gotta love him. Was he in it? He's in one he's of them. I don't know if he's in all of them, but dude, first off, crush it. Feech LaManna on The Sopranos. <laughs> oh, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, here we go. Loja. Can you spell that for me? <laughs> Certainly. That's Robert Loja. R as in Robert, Robert Loja. Loja. <laughs> o as in Oh my God, it's Robert Loja. <laughs> B as in By God, that's Robert Loja. <laughs> e as in Everybody loves Robert Loja. <laughs> R as in Robert Loja. <laughs> T as in Tim, look over there, it's Robert Loja. <laughs> Space. See, Family Guy will Space. milk it. As they will milk. Look, it's no Robert one else milk. Peter's so angry. <laughs> Yeah, he he's did getting one angry. He's in it though. He was in one before he died. I bet that's him though. That's him. I bet it's him. It's got to yeah. be him. <laughs> got it. like, him. I bet Family Guy is like this could work for seven different people. Yeah. So call yes. Robert Loja first. Tell him, hey, there won't be a negotiation because we have fucking, uh, um, I don't know, whoever. Yeah. Uh, uh, is next. He loves the family. Wow, look at this. Oh, shit. that's great. Damn, Good he was him. great. He's, he's in a lot of movies. Oh, he died. Yeah. He's got to be dead. He died a few years ago. He was awesome. Thank God. <laughs> or he loves death <laughs> no dude he was the fucking best wow see I saw uh, when I was a new comic like just moved to New York I was bombing a lot I was getting yelled at for being whatever offensive and I saw Seth MacFarlane on some panel on some show and he was like 
I get bags and bags of hate mail, like I should die, uh, cancel the show, blah, blah, blah. And I remember being like, oh, this guy gets hate mail? Right. I'm, yeah. I'm fine. And no one's going to remember that. Anything big. Exactly. They remember him being funny. Right. Anything big. Anything. I'm so sick of it. It's almost so hacky when you're like, there's a backlash to so and so. And it's like, of course, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you're bored. Every right single thing that's out. Because everyone's like, weigh in, weigh in. And everyone's like, well, I don't want to weigh in the way everybody's weighing in. Right. So it's like, what do you think of that lighter? Is that an extension on the lighter? Oh, cool, cool, cool. And it's like, well, some people are saying it doesn't fit in your pocket <laughs> as much. A lot of people are saying it doesn't fit in your pocket. And you're, you're right. Like, you just fo- so they have to focus on the negatives. Any stand up writer, any comedy writer, not, I'm, I'm not talking about like writing actual stand up, like writing about stand up, they're only paid to shit on things. Yeah. They're not paid to be like, this guy was a great charity. I saw the newest thing now is a podcast critic, John Smith. I'm like, podcast, podcast critic? critic? We're sitting around talking about bullshit on microphones while drinking. And You're you know it's not going to be a real critique or like, and they got like 20 minutes to get started this way. Yeah, but critics no. are only, you have to look at it this way. They're only going to get, if they shit on you, you're only going to get more listeners. You're getting bigger. You're not losing so. listeners out of that. Yeah. I guess so, but I'm still a sensitive queef where I'm like, eh, who oh, gives a maybe shit? Maybe I am boring. Yeah, 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 fucking let them complain. Let them complain. I they guess bow so. at our feet. We're free and they're not. <laughs> Ari, Ari says, and the that. longest blue socks I've ever seen. <laughs> look how free I am. That is a free man. <laughs> These are right free there. gifts. <laughs> no, they look, they look comfy. I love a comfy sock. They're bumble. They're from Emily at the stand. You I got, do comf- love a comfy, I got comfy sock. socks on myself here. Uh, I love them. I, I gave her tickets to, um, I think, Outside Lands or something. I bought her two tickets Good because fast. she took so many. I saw the Who many. there. She saw, Whoa. She saw Who there? Yeah. Who? The Who. The, wow. She took all these death threats after one of, out of one, one of my many fucking E-Rages. I think the Kobe one, but it E-rages. might have been a different one. And she's and people just kept calling. She was answering the phones like, I'll fucking kill you. I'm going to bomb that place. And I'm like, Emily, I'm really sorry you had to do that. Uh, <laughs> you take two tickets to a fucking There concert. you go. Damn. Good man. Wait, speaking of things you like, what about a peeve? I got a peeve. Hit me, fast. So I, my building required that we get locks changed for whatever reason. I don't know why. Then you do it, building. Well, they did it. They they paid for it. Okay. But I, I the guy comes by and, you know, comes by like an hour and a half late, whatever. I mean, I'm annoyed because I had to come here, but it's a he lock comes by late. And then, he, and then uh, I go, hey, man, I'm sorry you were late. I got to hop in the shower. And he goes, enjoy. What? Well, guess what? Now I won't. Ugh. Yeah. Now I have to. What? Am, what am, I'm going to enjoy that. Now I'm going to be in the shower. Like, yes, <laughs> yes. This is an amazing shower. Thank you. You can't oh. jerk off on a locksmith. Outside. No. Yeah. The worst guy. Enjoy a locksmith. A He's in your house. Crack. He can get in your infested, apartment. So he was speak. cracking me up. But I mean, uh, <laughs> enjoy is weird. Enjoy is rough. That's Don't a, tell me to enjoy. I would, first up, I would never think of even enjoying the shower. You no. just shower. It's you a thing shower. you got to do. There's a couple things you can't say enjoy to. Yeah. And in, and showering is one. Showering's also, it's rough. like something that's like, I'm already going to do this regardless. I wasn't going to not enjoy it, now I will. <laughs> yeah. You know, I just saw Speed for the first time. One like, of the best A night or two ever. ago. Great movie. And he's going into- Did you like it? Uh, yeah, it was great. It's also on Terry. Might be the, but might also be, dumb. Might be the best action movie ever. It was great. Whoa, but he loses his partner. Easy. I don't know. 40 minutes ago, and then he's falling in love. Like, everything's going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, your partner just died. I know, but tell me a better action movie, It's dude. great. It's, it's non-stop. Stop. It's non-stop. But also, there's this moment where, where he's going into the house or going into uh, under the car or something like that. And I forget who's... It's either Jeff Daniels says to him or he says to Jeff Daniels, be careful. And it's like, I mean... I'm yeah. going to disarm a bomb. I was already going to be as careful. <laughs> yeah, right. But right, it wasn't careful exactly. enough. Like, thanks yeah. for telling me. Yeah, enjoy. Fuck that guy. Enjoy. No, it was. I mean, it was kind of funny. No, I, I hope he dies. <laughs> <laughs> Pop quiz, dude, hot shot. Know, oh, dude, Dennis <laughs> Hopper. Come <laughs> on. Hot shot, yeah. That, that's what I'm saying. Speed is fucking awesome. You got a great villain. Dennis Hopper it. Uh, the fires through the roof ten times. He can't hit anybody. Yeah, right, right. And also, then he's like, I'll just realize... go fight this guy on the top of a train. <laughs> so it makes you realize how cool Keanu's been forever. He looks I know. so Keanu's young been in killing... it. And Keanu's so did what's her name? It. Bullock. Sandra Bullock. Bullock. She's God awesome. Damn, what a Tomcat. She, she Wildcat. rules. Wildcat. Yes. Yeah, she was great. That was that was a great that's a great blockbuster movie. action I, I, popcorn. I'm seeing it because it's like thirty years ago. So I'm seeing it with now, looking back, and everything's so dumb. And it's like, Sam, wait for the bus. It's the bus driver. And I'm like, what do you get the bus at exactly the same time every day? Yeah. There's more than one bus driver in this route. Uh-huh. So if you're 10 minutes late, you what do you mean? How do you know your bus driver? Right. Well, it was a different time. Different time. It was the time. 90s. I will say, it feels like we're making a shift to foreign films because there's less annoying bullshit. There's less like, like uh, the worst person in the world, no spoiler, it's just a bunch of white people. 
Well, they're Norwegian. They try to get on Jay Z for like they're like, oh, your factory has only white people, and he's like, it's in Norway. There's no (laughs) line in the movie. No, no, no. This is real. Actual life. They came after him because like, look at you taking a picture with all your employees at this factory, and he goes, it's my European. It's Norway. Wow, they're giving a black guy. They're giving a black guy shit about white work. I mean, it's uh, but it's like the looking looking glass glass. exactly. But like, uh, yeah, foreign films because if you make it like a seventies cop movie here, you couldn't do it with the level of racism they actually had. They have right. You couldn't show it real, right. It have to be completely independent, and then even if you try to sell it, they'd be like. Well, even no. the, when they remade the Sopranos movie, I thought the racism felt so forced. It I felt, agree. It felt yeah. kind of like you know, uh, like in the Sopranos, the racism felt like real. Real. Like, yes. And then you're watching it in the Many Saints of Newark, and you're like, "How is this earlier?" And it feels more buttoned up. Yeah. Good How point. How is this in the '70s? And still, you're like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> One of the first ones I saw was the Comedy Store show, whatever it's called. So I'm dying up here. Yes. And and it was like right. During Me Too, between season like two and season three, and they just started making all these women like really powerful characters in like the late seventies. Yeah. Oh uh, like, yeah. No. Well, they did that in that the Aaron happen. Sorkin uh, "I Love Lucy" movie. Uh, the Ricardos. Was, oh, it's awful. I didn't I mean, watch there's, it. There's this literally one of the first scenes is a female writer tells the show the Jess Oppenheim or whatever his name is the showrunner. Like, like, shut up! And it's like, yeah, that's that's <laughs> what happened in the showroom. <laughs> you would gotten a raspberry. That's what happened in the fifties, right? Yeah. Back of my um, hand. I mean, it's like I get that it's like all about empowerment and stuff, but like, you're either making an accurate movie, or, or you're not. Or you're making yeah. revisionist. Yeah. History. Make it in the future, yeah, then. Yeah. yeah. And or, also, or, right. Lucille Ball killed it. Was amazing. She changed was the, the game. One. She was the 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 biggest uh, the golden star. Yeah. yeah, star on the planet with this TV show about her, like. That's enough. She made it. That's the movie. Yeah, that's the powerful female character. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Just doing it, which is also what a lot of feminism is and what a lot of like race, like like any Latino comic, it, when I started, was like, you own your own car, you're a fucking superstar. You, know oh, what I mean? you wow. don't have to be uh, empowering or anything like that. Like Paul Rodriguez and, and Mencia and like, and like uh, Soto, Willie Bersena. Mencia would see what car you were driving. He would take it. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just like, you're doing it. So that's your empowerment. Feminism, it's like, you're doing it. That is feminism. That's it. And then it's weird that a lot of people, you know, it's like whitey sucks, but like they'll, they'll, they'll uh, act like the white guy. You know, they're like, I want to be the CEO and wear the, the suit and everything. And you're like, I thought you hated that. Yeah, we invented that. Well, I don't get, I don't get, yeah, I mean, it was just a different time. Just make it, you don't have to make it through today's lens that's exactly. not Roseanne that's did not it well what... roseanne was like yes. i'm gonna be a housewife great like, show. no real maybe i'll get a job at a fucking diner or factory like, these were my midwestern possibilities for yeah. that show check. felt very honest to people and it i think did. that's why it was they so opened groundbreaking up a motorcycle a repair shop same and with failed. children same shit it was the same time it was like well this i'm a very... shoe salesman I'm i don't have everything Dude, every time he walked in he would go uh a, a fat lady came into the shoe store today applause break <laughs> yeah that was an applause break. I know, I know. Let's rock. Because it was like fucking like my life sucks. And people yes. like, they they found that funny. Yes. He was the lowest scum of the earth. So when he had a win, you you, you went nuts. Yeah, his I mean, wife was just trying to get him to fuck her. I know. And she was Please, way too hot for him. Way, way too hot. And he was still like, ugh. Yeah. Ugh, I don't want to And all do he did it. was reminisce about his four touchdowns in one game. It was like, great. What, oh, can, we can all relate to this. I mean, we could all relate to be like, those were the days. I heard John Hughes was doing a movie before he died. He's writing it about all his characters from his other movies where they are now. Ooh. Ooh. And the one that I remember, the guy, the nerd from uh, 16 Candles was like some CEO somewhere. But the best was Ferris Bueller was some dumb mid-level manager. Wow. Who's still talking about that one day he had where he took off, took on the off school and he went on the parade wow. and he was almost saw his that's dad. Hilarious. He's still talking about it. That was his one moment. Well, that's interesting because that show. Norman's favorite, by the way. That's love that Ferris? movie. Yeah, I love that movie. It was great. But uh, you say the uh, the Married with Children thing is an interesting point because it, uh, it was a very, like, lowbrow show. But it was kind of sophisticated in the same way of All in the Family. Whereas, yeah. like, you got this Real. protagonist. He's a loser. He's a shoe salesman. He's, he's a balding piece of shit, whatever. Flawed. Hates his wife. But you knew that. And so everything else was... It was all punching up because exactly. he was the loser. He's, He's a, a loser. loser. His son's a loser. Yes. His daughter's a slut. Yes. I mean, this is like he has his not wife's won unhappy. at all. His last good day was fucking senior year of high school. Exactly. When he happened to find four holes in the fucking line. Yes. And went for it. Yes. But it's the same with uh, Archie Bunker. Like yeah. 
He ha- he was racist. He was sexist. He's he was doing the best he could as a raised racist. Yes, he had a fucking dry cleaner friend, and he was the punchline. Oh, this bunker, fucking guy. Yeah, but you couldn't family. do that now because they'd go, "Well, he's a racist." You're like, "I know, but that's the that's the joke. He sucks." I know the joke is, but people are too literal. Yeah, but now if that's that was the show, that would be the whole show. Up. That would be the whole be the show. show. They're like, this guy's racist. Instead of it being a small part of like, I mean, we've talked about this before, but as good as it gets, like, yes. I rewatch it. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot Nicholson just is like shitting on Demeaning Jews. women. Oh, he's, Jews. Well, he's like, he's like, look at these noses. You're like, you know, and you're like, oh shit, I forgot. If they remade this, it was just, he was just shitty in every way. That was the point of Nicholson's character. Right. He was shitty. To, yeah, you're right. The women, one of the greatest just lines. Just right. Yeah, well, that's say, a great say it, line. Say it. How do you write women so well? I think of a man and I take away reason and accountability. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, it's the best. <laughs> it won Best Picture for Christ's sake. Did it? Yeah. No, I think Titanic won. Nah. Though, yeah. He won though, and so he did won. She. Maybe yeah. Best. What are the play? ones? What are the ones that should have won, and that makes you angry that it didn't? Huh. L.A. Confidential's up there. I lost, mean, uh, lost to what? Uh, I think Shakespeare in Love. Ooh. Lame. Ooh. And it Saving Private Ryan was, was good. That uh, uh, oh uh, wow. Also, Pulp Fiction lost to um, the fucking Zemeckis one. Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. Everything. Which is like Forrest Gump. great. Forrest Gump was good, but Pulp Fiction. I think Forrest Gump is overrated. Uh, I know it's a what bold beat out? Statement. Did Fargo win Best Picture, man? Uh, here's one in the bedroom. One of my favorite movies of That's all time. That's a great Marissa Tomei. Mm-hmm. I don't I great don't deep theater. dark. Lost to uh, Beautiful Mind. And it, uh, something that I threw a drink down at because I was so mad at it. <laughs> oh, okay, it did win Best Picture. Oh, know. good. Which That's one? a Fargo? win. Fargo, Fargo is yeah, amazing. Fargo is dope. Francis McDormand killed it. Yeah. Wait, what, what? Did we get a? We got a peeve. Yeah, yeah. I got to do peeve. a peeve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. did a peeve. Yeah. You yelled a peeve. Sorry, I, I was worked I up. I like it. I was worked up. I like the. Peeve. The, 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 we might be going. Listeners are going to like that one too. The so. listeners yes. should like it. Because fuck, these come are on. good ass drinks. This is my oh, last yeah. drink for a while, and the reason I'm doing is because I'm like, oh, obviously I'm going to drink on. We might be drunk. Hell yeah. Obviously I'm drinking. But these are good ass Boulevardiers. Dude. They're very good. I planned on old Great pals job. but we called an audible and these kind of worked out pretty damn well. Look I like great. the idea of like we're, go- we're going for a drink let's just do it. Like when we had Godfathers at my house and it was like we're Godfathers. going for one drink and we're fucking doing it. That was you listen know? to that. Oh, that episode. was great. Another great Godfather. Day. Another what is it? If this you haven't listened to that episode, me and Norman did Ari's pod Skeptic Tank uh, and yes. that was fun as hell. It's over 100k I checked. Really? Nice. Yes. Killing it. Yeah. Was it Best guy. Picture? Which one, Matt? As good what, as it gets. Skeptic Tank, you no, it was wrong? Titanic, dude. That was Good well, Will Hunting. 98. You can't beat Titanic. Th- that I'll understand. Best actor, best actress. Yeah, and uh, it was James L. Brooks fucking rules. Oh, yeah, he's great. Simpsons. Fuck him. <laughs> well, oh, Nicholson won. <laughs> oh, L.A. Confidential was that? That was a stacked oh, year. Titanic, what, you're right. Robin Williams, Good Kim Will Hunting. Kim Basinger was smoking hot in that movie. So hot. So hot. Damn. Wait, what won Best Movie? Titanic. Titanic. No, best film editing. That's no, I know. We don't editing. have best picture up here, but oh, Titanic. Yeah. We all remember Titanic won. But it I mean, did win. The sound editing, Titanic. Best Boogie Cinema Nights, best LA picture. Confidential, okay. Goodwill Hunting. Wow. That's a stacked movie year, dude. Movies Damn. suck now. Or movies American suck movies suck, dick. I should say. Other people have caught up. We we restrained ours too much. Yes. It's like, it's like taxi drivers Damn, Men in Black that year, too. Cards. Like, well, now here's Uber. Here's uh-huh. the Norwegian film called fucking Worst Woman in the World. And Taxi Driver, great Person. movie. Will Smith was at that Oscars, too. He didn't slap anybody. <laughs> didn't slap anybody. One of his least slappable Oscars. Damn, what else? Oh, Men in Black, that was a fun movie. Men in Black's great. Oh, yeah. Good the first times. one's incredible. Dude, incredible. so he's banned from the Oscars for 10 years. What if he wins another one in like eight years? When everyone he could, he could win. He could. He goes, he's going to accept this from his house, or are they going to be like, just come, you're one. Nobody I don't think he's going to win one. I don't think he's going to I think win. what he did was horrible. I think what Roman Polanski did was worse. <laughs> a bit. <laughs> yeah, a bit. But uh, Both banned. I think what he did was fucking There's no gross. way one of those 12-year-old girls, Roman Polanski, like, shuffled in the goal. What? Uh, I just got raped by Roman Polanski. Uh, right. Dude, <laughs> another huge wreck. The this book, is the greatest night Oscars in the world. Check out the book, The Big Goodbye by Sam Wasson. It's all about Polanski and uh, Nicholson and Ch- the making of Chinatown. It's one of the best movie books ever made. Really? Check it out. The Big Goodbye. Pull, pull up a picture. It's, I love that behind the scenes It's shit. phenomenal. It make, it'll make you think Nicholson's pretty fucking cool, too. And he was reading. great in... Um... Easy Rider. Know. Look at that cover. Yeah. That's better. That's Easy a Riders. Cover. Fucking that. That was his. Breakout. I saw that. That was a pin egg movie for me. They didn't want him in it either. Apparently. Really? Yeah. I think Dennis Hopper wanted someone else, and then he was like, "No, nah, he killed it." Like later, he's like, "Yeah, he killed it." Yeah, because he was still a newish guy then. Yeah. He was great as a straight edge guy who had to be killed because he was the the barrier between the Spoilers hippies and the regulars. Yes. 
All right, here's my peeve. Yes, sorry. I got two two little ones that maybe will add up to a big one. Okay. One, the guy who puts blacks. <laughs> the sorry. guy who sorry. puts uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, there's like mul- like limited chairs in a room, and the guy who puts his stuff on a chair takes up a whole chair nope. with his bag, his jacket, nope. uh, his not whatever. allowed, not allowed. I don't know Even- who opened for Norman last uh, weekend, but we all know this was in a green room. It was. How dare you want your space in a tight room? What's wrong? Fuck put- off. Put you- your bag on the floor, or put it on your lap, put it on your yes. floor. Absolutely not. Yeah. You can't do it in a movie theater. This is uh, someone's seat. Yeah. I'll take it a step further. Subway. Oh, the, the bag on the seat subway person deserves oh. to be shot in the face. Uh, dude, it's crazy. People are How come the subway shooter should just be going after that person? Yes, yeah. exactly. Oh, that's what the big thing with man spreading was a big thing. And right. then they go, well, what about there was some pushback? What about these women who put their purses taking up on the seat? You're taking up two seats like this. What about these purses? Uh huh. Same Good shit. Point. You Good just point. want your space. Woman spreading. Woman spreading. Uh huh. Yeah. Purse yeah. spread. A bitch spread. <laughs> um, the worst sandwich uh, kind of bitch spread. <laughs> spread yeah. I went to a Jewish like, deli, I got some bitch spread. It was <laughs> it terrible. Terrible. warm tuna. Yeah. Um, terrible. That's yeah, one. That's one. I've had at Edinburgh, I had like a pack show, and it was yeah. like, we let as many people as we could, oversold it, and people were like putting their shit down. It was like, hey, we have no room. Like, but okay. we have no room. Someone's going to sit in this room and watch. Yes. Move your fucking thing. I know. And they always go, uh, like, oh, oh, you're you're the good guy here. I'm the bad guy. It's the people Move who show up bed. early enough before it gets packed where you're thinking like, oh, cool, yeah. I have my space. Like, dude, more people are coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good pet peeve. That's All right, good. so that was one. I would just – who. The guy I know who's who he is, but I would just move the bag and put it on the floor and sit down. I'm like, I'm sitting here. Wow. It's, there's three chairs in this motherfucker. I played yeah. a club once, and <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to trash a club because I love the club, but there was a guy who was like, my dog is in there. Oh, I'd go in the couch. Boy. There'd be a dog, a giant oh. dog spread all over the couch. I'd be like, The green room? Yeah. Like, no. I'd be like, I don't know. What, do I sit on the dog? What yeah. do I do? Oh, I'll sit on the floor. I'll sit on the floor and curl up yeah. at your feet because I'm a dog. Yeah, put some newspaper down and I'll lay on the floor. How do you like on that? The floor. <laughs> that the owner of the dog needs to step in there and go, hey, yeah. sorry about uh, Roxy. Or it was a cute fuck. dog, but yeah, we need, we need some no. space. Well, the yeah. Veter's cute too, all right? <laughs> put him on a fucking I dog. love these parents. I put him on, on some newspaper. Parents do the same thing where they're like, sorry, my kid's screaming. It's like, yeah, get it out of here. Yes. We're having dinner. Yes. Get your fucking kid out of here. Or, I love or peeves. Trainer. This is a, here's my wreck. Have more peeves. Have more it's peeves. venting. It's, yeah, it it gets out some of that fucking anger. You're fucking. You're like you're venting about bullshit, here, and here. you feel better. Yeah. Have you had any peeves that the rest, the other two of you guys go? Mm, I, I don't, of course, yeah. yeah. Occasionally, yeah, we happens. both push back on each other. Occasionally, but for the most part, we're both. That, that that's Put the most New York sh- shit is just complaining and being like, yeah. Here's right. one. But then also being like, life is good. Here's yes. one. Yes. Yeah, life is good. Life is good. But it's fun to do this. So I have a exactly. bunch of text threads with my comedian friends. We all do. Um, and you shit on other comedian friends. Sure. And the reason you do this, Big J told me, the reason you do this is so then, let's just say we're shitting on Norman for, oh, he wears plaid so much. Fuck him. He wears plaid so much. This is an innocuous <laughs> example. Flannel boys. Yeah. The yeah. Flannel boys. Why is he always being in that flannel boys group? And then when you see him, you got it out of your chest. You're like, hey, Mark, how you doing? Uh, <laughs> Instead of like, point. oh, here good he is point. again with another flannel. You just got to get it off your chest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's so true. So true. This, so, are we calling this episode the Boulevardier Flannel Boys? <laughs> Boulevardier. Yeah. Do you classic. guys have a house drink at your house? Oh, yeah. My go-to? I do. Mine is the Godfather, the Patron. What is it again? What's Patron? It again? It's, it's Amaretto, a PD whiskey, which we which we learned together. Yes. The peatier is, the better is because it offsets the sweetness. Sure. I love PD. You can't have a smooth whiskey. Love PD. And, and on like a La big Fourier, cube. Lafourier, Lagavulin, one of those mm-hmm. PD scotches. So that's yeah. my house drink. If somebody's coming in. You know, if, if if I'm coming home or if my boyfriend's coming with fucking some fucking third boy that he doesn't fucking know, you know, then it's like, then it's like, hey, guys, how you doing? There's yeah. Two, two godfathers to start with. Yeah. You What's go. your drink at home, Mark? I go, I'm, I'm like you, but you guys are mixing more. I just go straight uh, Lagavulin on the rocks, yeah. Ardbeg on the rocks, or Ardbeg. tequila on the rocks. Ardbeg, Ardbeg underrated. I, oh, PD. When I, when I would do the, when I did uh, those Amy Schumer gigs, her her brother loves Ardbeg. Yes. So that was in the rocks. That's where I, I got into it. Ardbeg no, you got Lagavulin. Like, dude, every barbecue I had, by the way, July 4th, you both invited. Ooh. Um, uh, Ooh. View of the uh, fucking fireworks. Um, yeah. Yep. Uh, Every barbecue I had, Norm was like, I, I just brought half a bottle of Lagavulin. I'm like, what's this half a bottle? You know like, what? That's better than a full bottle shots? of most yeah. shit, and, and then we have the rests. Exactly. <laughs> that's better than most full bottles. It's yeah, a, that's true. A good, that's a good gesture. Yeah, I'm a big fan. I, at home, it's usually, if I have a friend over, it's usually uh, 
either Manhattan, Negroni, or a martini. And I, occasionally I will just do straight whiskey, but it's usually some sort of mixed cocktail. Cocktail feels like when you have a friend over, it feels like you put more effort in. That, a yeah. friend over for sure. I mean, if I'm drinking alone, I guess I could do a whiskey, but if I have a friend have a over, friend. I'm like, let me mix you. I'm going to fucking, my friend John Weisberg lives in my neighborhood. You oh, know yeah, John? great guy. He comes oh, over, I'm like, I'm going to make you a fucking martini with some blue cheese olives at the Ooh, motherfucker. Because like, oh, that's Ooh. fucking, that, no one's ever not been like, oh, hell yeah. Dude. Yeah, hell yeah. Right. You, you just hand someone a, a, a cocktail. Yeah. They don't go, oh, I was hoping for something else. They just go, thank you. That's yeah. a good host. Yeah. Right or, yeah. What's your dream? Liquor dream. I'll tell you mine so you can get it started. My dream is, I can't do it in New York, none of space, to have a globe- uh, uh, open up whoa. globe bar. You got the space for that. No, space. I do not. You can pull it off. Not in my new place. Oh, my old place, place, baby. Dream One liquor. I mean, there's something very special. I can have it in the a... studio room. I can have it in the studio room. What do you call it? Like a rolling uh, liquor tray? I don't know the bar cart. Bar cart. There's something so classic. I have a that bar would be cart. cool. You I have one. A bar cart. And yeah. then you can bring um, it over. You have like, one? I bought one when I moved into my new place. I bought one instantly. I'm gonna, when I move, I'm going to get one. And then you're like, what do you want? Yeah. And it's like, well, I have each of the mixers. Yeah. You have one bottle of Coca Cola, one bottle of Sprite, and then all the, some whiskey, some vodka, yes. some tequila, some vermouth, rum. rye, yeah. all that shit. And, and then you when ready. they serve a, uh, when they serve a Bloody Mary in that carafe, you're like, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, I love yes. that carafe. That's exactly what I there want. That's, That's like, my ooh. dream. Give me a shot of it open if you can find it. Uh, I, like, just, I want Peter, to right Peter, can we get hey! Wow. Peters, I want that for the new studio. Yeah, can we do it? Three seven. It's on sale. Hundred dollars off. What is it? My father was a Way drunk. Fair? He used to beat me with a globe. What's a, what's a, what's a, I hate studio? traveling. Where's Probably because my dad used to beat me Walk with away. a globe. Yeah. <laughs> Tell. Uh, so you're getting your Tell. own studio. He's buying a new studio, so we're moving like a, an avenue. This over. fucking homo. Matt yeah, Peters. he owns the place. Wow, really? Oh, we yeah. love you, Matt, and we're moving Gotham Studios soon, so th- we're not going to be here that much longer. But we are taking the Patrick Ewing cut out with us. I know you're all wondering. Taking it all with us. He's got movers, thank God, and uh, we're gonna yeah send oh, all cool. this shit to a block away. Wow, that's awesome. I'm pumped. It's gonna be great. Uh, I lo- I do love the globe. Dude. I like the globe. Yeah, it's a that's nice a touch. nice touch for a corner, like right in here, or like yes. I don't know. Just it looks cool. Closed. At- we have two seats, yeah. and we've also never had double guests, and we might have to start doing double guests every once Let's in a while. Let's do it. I mean, I've seen double, but yeah. <laughs> well, uh, here's my other peeve. Yeah, another yeah, quickie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Second. And this might be a New York thing, only. But I got one. The the walking down the big sidewalk. Oh! Every now and then you're on a big sidewalk. It's wide, this and you get the family that's doing the full build that wall. Build the wall. I hate the build the wall because oh they're always God. going two miles an hour. They're looking up at the the they're Empire State. They're staring up. Double. Uh, the, the, yeah, the, the building. Three rows of two, not one row of six. Yes. Now you're so- walking in traffic. You're risking getting hit by a fucking disgruntled driver. Yes. Just because these people can't spread it out. I'm yeah. doing Red Rover out here. Yep. Yep. My peeve. Another peeve is that. With someone walking too close behind you, oh, just pass. Just pass. Especially pass. with us, because we you know, say I'm horrific with the girlfriend. things. Pass. Pass. Yeah. Passing Here's lane. another thing about the Mexicans. Oh, hey, what's up? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're on you. And they all got phones now. They can record you. There was or... me and uh, me and Joe List, a popular comedian from New York, uh, New York, and, Never uh, heard of and him. Mark Norman, another guy with a pop a podcast about uh, drinking. Uh, <laughs> we were all walk. We saw Ghost, one of the worst movies of all time. Oh, Casey so Affleck. bad. Is that the name? Is Ghost. It a bad movie. Ghost. I don't You're know. You're thinking it's Ghost Goldberg? World. Ghost, Ghost Story. Ghost Story. It's Casey Affleck. For ninety eight yeah, percent of the film, Ghost is with Whoopi Goldberg and Patrick Kate, Swayze. And Kate shit. Rooney. Yeah. Kate and, Mara. Uh, uh, yeah, he wore She's just a, a regular ghost. Yeah, ghost co- very pretty. Oh, it's terrible. Anyway, we're so walking, bad. So bad. Eating ice cream. Some lady behind us is trying to pass us. We're eating ice cream. We're literally strolling. Yeah. And she goes, <gasps> Oh, yeah. I forgot we about that. immediately just ripped into her. Like, Oh, yeah. This lady's got a busy to get a heart attack. She can't fucking wait two yeah. seconds. She passed the wrong people. We just started ripping into her. Oh, immediately. I forgot about that. We saw a bad movie. We got ice cream. We got friends. Yeah, we were ready to go. Oh. Uh. That movie sucks. Suck. I wanted to like and it. And the reviews are all like, wow. I powerful. hate when that happens. Hey, critics, step it up. Step it up. I'm sick of these Quit 95% like- Rotten Tomatoes movies with 40% audience scores. I'll tell you something. I was, I Start was telling- liking what you're supposed to like instead of what you should I was, like. I was, I was talking about- Look at that so- difference. That's a fucking Chappelle movie. Chapp- <laughs> I, was, I was talking to someone the other day. I said, oh, you know what's a pretty funny movie is a Grandma's Boy. I said it's a funny movie. I look it up. 15% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, yeah. Guess what the audience score is? 87. 85. That's a fucked Solid up difference. Movie. How about That's this? Crazy. Freddy Got Fingered. 
Uh-oh. I love Freddy Got Fingered. Panda is one of the worst movies of all time. Saw it. The scene where he's having a deep discussion with his father. Rip about Torn. Ch- yeah, about who's one of the funniest it. human beings so ever. Funny. Fifty-six. Well, that's that's a big jump. Still. Big jump, big but jump, still, still bad. still bad. He's having a talk with his dad, a really meaningful, co- and then he's like, "My dad, I love. I'm gonna make it." He goes, "Go make it, son. I'm gonna make it, dad." Yeah. Goes, you go make 56 it. Fifty-six versus eleven. If it's a if it's a forty-five plus point difference, that's massive. Also, it's- these are parents going on there and going hey my son watched this it was a little much no kid, kids scene, are watching that and go scene, to play yeah. hockey i there saw an opening they, day in the wow. movie theater with two of my friends we were the only three people in the movie theater no. damn hey can i tell you i was in the worst rated film of all time catwoman no that's funny Geely. Um, uh <laughs> jersey uh, girl it was a Vince, God damn that watch. Sorry. This Vince is my Aria Aria directed Aria. we did more amazing races up because we wanted to it was part it was Inappropriate comedy. You say Vince Scully? Vince Shlomi, the oh. ShamWow guy. <laughs> I was like, hey, do you want to do more Isn't Raising Races stuff? No. He just got his tongue bit off by a hooker. Ah. He's still fine. <laughs> hey. And I was like, sure, we can do it. Is he, how much of his tongue is he missing? A quarter. Damn. Can he still do the pod? Can he be a guest? He should be a guest. I'm just All trying right. to get Did him. he wipe Would up he the blood on? with the ShamWow? Hey, and Charlie Sheen, the offer is still out there. We yes. want you on the pod. We're big fans. Charlie... Have a drink with us. I'll, we we we'll either have beer Jew or I'll fucking make. I, I'm a decent bartender. We can make some tiger blood, baby. Charlie Sheen, yeah, do coke. Yeah, if he wants to do coke, you do coke. Mark's never done it. You've ever done it with I've Charlie Sheen? It. I would do it. I I'm not doing. Coke. That's a Snoop Dogg. That's a Snoop Dogg of a blunt. Yes, yeah, he's a like, Snoop Dogg right. of coke and AIDS. You got real ones. All yeah. right. So what was your story? What was it? Tom Green. Freddie got fingered. Oh, maybe that was oh, the end of it. It's just the worst rated movie of all time. Inappropriate comedy. Tom, Wait, what movie? Fucking, Tom Look Green should on, come uh, on here, man. I love Tom Green. Oh, he's a sweet guy. I love that Inappropriate. guy. Inappropriate. 2013. Oh, in you're look, in this. Look up the rating. Look at look. I was with they are. Oscar Award winner Adrian Brody and me were in a film wow. together. Wow. I mean, that, that, that cast has range. Let's Adrian see, Brody and Rob 2. Schneider. 7 <laughs> out of 10. Zero wow. percent. Well done. Well Audience done. Audience score twenty two percent. I'm pretty close to the critics. Zero oh, percent. Man, that's impressive. Good Horrible for you. watch. I will not watch again. Actively advise against watching. <laughs> that's a badge of honor. <laughs> All right, we got to wrap this we up. Wrap we've, this been up. In, we've been Ari, in here four first hours. Off, Ari's taping a special at Skirball. No, not at Skirball. They it? would not have me back. Fuck Skirball. <laughs> yeah. where, where, where is it's it? It's at the Roulette Intermedium where. A great comic named Sam Murrill once taped a special, which so I was So did at. Chris DeStefano, so Gary Goldman. A lot, a lot of good oh, specials. Oh, really? Gary taped The Great Depression there. Chris taped Size 38 Waist there. Sam Murrill uh, t- taped uh, Positive Influence. Uh, Ari was great there room. at that, that night. I, I was. a lot that you were there. Uh, definitely, Dude, I've seen this show. I haven't seen it in a while because it's, it's been the pandemic, but it's called Jew. It's called Jew. It's all, it's about, all about you growing up as a Jew. Yeah, and what mm. Judaism is and stuff like that. But honestly, it's just a club funny special. It's a lot of fun, though, and it's and it's a very unique story. And you really should go see this roulette. What's the date? Uh, June 11th and 12th. Saturday and Sunday. There it is. Beautiful. I am. Um, this it's is my last venue drinking. in Brooklyn. What? Great venue. Great venue in Brooklyn. Yeah, in Borham Hills. Yeah. Brooklyn, when you say Brooklyn, it's like that could mean anything. I know. It's, a, I know. it's right by difference. Atlantic Avenue. It's right by the Barclays Center. It's mm-hmm. like two blocks from the Barclays Center. It's like right yeah. in the heart of it. You're you're gonna be fine. It's a great Kevin venue. Durant will be there, so will Kyrie Irving. Yeah, exactly. I've seen they're out of the playoffs. <laughs> I've seen nuggets of this special throughout. You know, at the cellar, at the stand, at New York, whatever the, it is. The, the chicken swinging the yeah. neck. Literally, a lot of weird legitimately, stories. what I say yeah. is, it was like uh, same thing with the stories. Where I'm like, this has to, for myself. This has to be club funny. For sure. So, like, when I was doing the stories in LA, I'm like, I have to be able to follow Bobby Lee with this stuff. Sure. And what I say here is, like, these bits have to be able to follow Mark Normand. Yeah. Mm. If they can't follow Mark Normand, then it's like, then it's not good enough. For sure. So it's like, I, I forget like the theme. It's got to it's gotta just blend in, in in a show where you don't notice it. Look, that guy was funny too. That's good. In 15 minutes. It's important chunks. to do your stories at a comedy club as well. Yes, because these one person shows can get a little indulgent and slower. Because people so are with you no matter what. So exactly. Like, I saw Babiglia going after me at the cell last night. I'm like, I think it's cool that Babiglia does seller spots. Yeah. And, and he's doing one man show stuff too. I think it's right. very Can cool you sway them into it. your point of view when they're like, I want jokes? I'm like, I will give you jokes. It will be also something else. It's a yeah. different thing and it's it is a harder thing to do in a club yeah 
but you can say. do it. Yeah. You just have to do it. It is. You're right. It is hard to do in a 15 minute set in particular. Yeah. So good on you for, you. for doing it that so way. So I'm taping it June 11th and 12th. This is my last day drinking. I'm going to keep going hard Whoa. today. I want to look good for it. So you're going to look great, man. Thank you. Wow, and you um, can't just change your face. Yeah. But Adrian will open for me on Sunday. Good luck. She's doing Denver on the Saturday. But oh, any, love other, any other road gigs already coming up? Yeah, I got Jacksonville with uh, Adrian, uh, Caitlin Palufo in Louisville. And, nice. Um, Good. And That's Buffalo's, a fun weekend. Uh, it'll be done. But like uh, Kansas City with uh, DeVito. Nice. And I'm doing a residency all the Jew hour in uh, in Austin, uh, Memorial Day week. And I don't know, man. Uh, all right. Chicago the day after Mark Norman, June 18th. Oh. And Minneapolis the day before Mark Norman. Are we flip-flopping there? At the Pantages? Yeah. Yeah. Are I we flip-flopping? I guess so. Well, a lot of crossover. Come see crossover. both of us. Come Fuck see it. both of us. Why not? Do two yeah. nights of comedy. Make see your some own Jew and, and some Goy. We'll mix it up. And Tampa, have we added a third show? I think so. Great. They're both sold out. Yeah. So. I don't know if In August? That one. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be a, a wild, <laughs> wild night. Yeah. Wild weekend. Be a part of it. Say hello. Be a part of it. It's going to be great. Exactly. Have you guys started taking stand-up for granted yet or not? No, no I love it. I love it so kidding? much. No, I'm very gracious. I'm so happy. I mean, I after the pandemic, I think it reset everybody. I don't know this comes out, but we got East Providence, uh, Rhode Island. You're taping your special the same weekend I am, Sam Morrell. Ah, but it's in a different city. Different in Chicago city. and New York. Chicago, the big I can't wait. Dan, we're going to have a lot of fun. Special Are you taping three you? nights? Yeah. You're taping three nights? Three nights. Why not? Smart. Tampa. What, one, two, two? Or two two two. Two two two. Wow, good for you. Tampa, you got the cameras. Cleveland, Houston, West Palm, Dania Beach, Buffalo, all that shit. You're gonna San Jose, you're gonna see me soon. So I uh, I'm adding dates. I forget to put them on my site, but a Man, lot's coming. That first drink after the second show, the third night. Whoo, that's oh, gonna, I'm gonna be, be nice. fucking lit up, buddy. Okay, uh, let me give you a suggestion. Please. Because I'm doing this. I love my favorite scotch is this uh Kaulale. Oh yeah. I've drank oh, yeah. before. Oh yeah, we had it. Yeah. Kaulale. Favorite, it's a ten, I think. I bought an 18 uh, year 18 year to have after my special where it was like I had to order from ink from Scotland. It was like 250 bucks. It's and I'm like, it. I'm going to have exactly. I'm going to have this as a reward for get yourself a fucking fine liquor. I'm going to do it. have with you and your friends and whoever's there. I'm going to wow. do it. The same way. Uh, Gary Vee is going to be back on the wagon. Exactly. <laughs> Robert Kelly brought a box of cigars for Joel's wedding. And he goes, it doesn't matter if you take two puffs. Have a fucking nice cigar. That's a on, good call. Wow. I love it. Love Bobby. Wait, yeah. when is your special? We gotta get Bobby June eleventh and twelfth in in New York, New York, Brooklyn, New York. Ah, damn, I what? wanna be there. Sunday is the second day. I'll be there. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna try if I'm back, I'm gonna definitely come to that. All nice. Right. I would love to have you guys. There. I'll tell you this. We all went to um Becky Own special. Oh yeah. Because we were there. Me, Sam, Shane, Big J, uh 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 The Great Mike Vecchion. Yeah, Shane Gillis. So oh, look sorry. out for the look Nate out for Mike Becky directed Young, it. One of all of our favorites. Uh, Josh Adam killer. Meyer. It was killer. just like a bunch of comics, and Nate had his, his own personal bus out front. He goes, go on there, drink, and it was just such a fun hangout. Oh, the and best. we got done with the first show. We all fuck it, you know. It was yeah. just like it was like when you got passed. Yeah, it, it was like that. We're like, where'd it go? We did it. I love him, man. Vec is yeah, so and underrated. So it was just like and then me and Shane went in there and tried to like not get too drunk to like heckle. Yeah, you know, for the second show, but it was just like it's a fun, friendly <laughs> you environment. Fuck up your friends' night. Yeah, what same thing with Michelle special at the Skirball. It was like I like when everybody's there. He did, yeah. did Zanies in Nashville. He did right? Zanies. Oh, Dude, beautiful. Mike Vecchione, one of my favorite jokes of all time, where he goes, uh, "I signed up to be a private detective online, and they just took my money." And I thought, either I just got ripped off, or this is my first case. Ah, uh, <laughs> brilliant! The great Mike Vecchione. He's good joke. He had a great joke where he, I'm going to butcher this. I've been drinking. But he goes, uh, I went to a vending machine to buy condoms, and they, they got stuck. So I started shaking the machine. He's like, maybe I shouldn't have a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and he says it better. He has another one, too, where he goes, you know, I saw a, a vending machine for condoms and aspirin. Now she's got no no excuse. Ah, no up. headache. No That's excuse. Great. Yeah, great joke. Wow. All right. I'm in Huntsville, Alabama at Stand Up Live, uh, Minneapolis, uh, Pantages. Come see me, not Ari. Chicago at the Vic. <laughs> Cleveland, Ohio at the Agora. Oh, uh, wow. Some some Burt dates, whatever That's what that Bert is. Special the Agora in, in, in Cleveland. Uh, it's selling horribly. Mark's making the move. It we'll was see. so funny to see Mark Norman at. I'll be back. Chappelle, the Chappelle movie in in uh, in uh, Madison Square Garden. He didn't see it. He came afterwards. Yeah. You can cut any of this out you want. But, uh oh. But uh, we're there. Somebody goes, "Hey, Mark, what'd you think of this, the the movie?" He didn't see the movie. He was just he just came with Che afterwards. 
Che was like, hey, we're going, going to the after party. You want to come? And he's like, oh, sure. He goes, Mark, what'd you think of the movie? He goes, a little self-serving, but uh, a little self-indulgent, but overall good. And then the guy's like, yeah, you're not wrong. And then the guy left and I was like, you didn't see it though, right? He goes, nah, I'm just guessing. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the point is, Mark Norman's Keep making the in. jump now. The same as Sam Morrell. Yeah. It's crazy it's to see the you beacon, guys make the beacon this jump. Sold out. It's crazy to see him make the guys. It's like it's not that I don't believe it. Was same as Sebastian. It's like I know you from the guy who worked at the sure, four seasons. Sure. So it's like it's so fucking epic to see the jump of like it's real top comic it in happen. the world. Thanks, it's man. very strange. It's cool. We'll it's be back. Cool. We'll be back. Yeah, Irvine, back yeah, I remember. California. I remember opening for Jim Jeffries in 2011, and uh, Jim sold out every show at Caroline's, and he goes, "Well, we'll see this place in the way back down." <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> that's every. That sums it all oh up god. right there. Houston uh, Improv Comedy Club, Red Bank, New Jersey, LOL in San Antonio, and uh, all kinds of fun stuff. MarkNormanComedy.com. We love you. Uh, keep all listening. Right. We might be drunk pod.com, Patreon.com slash We might be drunk pod. Great guest. You sell Definitely these glasses? Goes, we sell these glasses on the website. We might be drunkpod.com. Gotham Studios. We love you, Matt. Yes. Uh, Ari, go to that special if you're in New York. It's going to be yeah. awesome. It's going to be so cool. Don't fuck up. Go to that special. Great episode. Yes. Flew by. We did what, two hours, man? Damn. Easy. What's normal? An not, hour. Not two hours. Change. Yeah. <laughs> I love these ones where we all got some chemistry of like real people. I know Easy. we can just chill friends. and drink and Easy. talk and relax and be ourselves. But that's gonna be a great yeah. special. Even if you're not Jewish, go see it. No, seriously, Buy tickets. no matter what, it's gonna be fun. Let's so we're gonna train on each it. other. And skeptic tanks, <laughs> skeptic tank. Check out the pod and uh, get on the Patreon. Get a shirt. Get a glass. Get a drink. Get a. Get a get a life. I'm Thank bombed you. already on two drinks. I know. They were good. huge. I made huge drinks. Make another. Sunday's the day for my next bender. A bit of Pivarek, you know the beer juice close. I've had a little too much bourbon. And Norman's talking shit about the fucking Pope. And I get down in the same way. Up on the roof like a cop's coming. And naked Samuel is feeling dangerous. To lunch here in New Orleans This woman doesn't look like I remember her And I